the day. So let's bring that up and see which which team has decided to play on which map. Again. I'll go out on a limb and say that Oregon's probably not going to be here. I would not be surprised. Um, Just based off both Space Station and G2 notoriously banning that map. I mean, that said, a lot of the times we actually end... Okay, <laughs> there you go. I, I was going to try and counterpoint that, but look, the veto is just going to disprove me. So off the table is uh, Coastline. Interestingly, I suppose that's a, that's a specifically counter ban. It's been a favorite of uh, G2s for quite some time, so nice that hmm. SSG... I mean, you actually, that's, that's G2 that banned Coastline. Shas, what are you doing? Are you trying to hide something from us? I think, I think there's something being cooked up that we're not quite so sure about. But our three maps, ladies and gentlemen, Clubhouse, Bank, and to wrap it all up, it's Villa, a map that both teams are absolutely insane on. You mentioned Redeemer's Echo and Maestro play. Oh boy, how many highlight movies do we have of just Redeemer mowing through people on Villa specifically? I just want to make it to Villa so we can see what happens when you let Monty go through and you have a good Echo player at the same time. I want to see that. Yeah, that is, that is for sure. It, it really is a pretty exciting matchup. Clubhouse, though, our very first map in this best of three series. You look at it, highlight for G2, similar to a lot of teams in EU, but more specific to them, Mute plus Bandit play together quite a bit, especially on Cash playing Garage. Cantor Ricchetti will play Jaeger. We've seen the aggressive plays that he can put up on the board, but a lot of teams now when it comes to Clubhouse kind of can just not play a maestro and a lot of teams just afford to play the dock just to bring the extra sustain especially if you're playing in that garage on the catwalk and also have the bonus that is the bulletproof camera which has been proven to be a very powerful bit of utility and very annoying to get rid of very annoying it, it like the the utility you have to use to get rid of both either the maestro cam or bulletproof cam doesn't really outweigh the you know leaving it there it has to go but you can't really afford to use the utility either now, I believe we have some statistics for a specific map on here to see what we've got on it. There you go. And guess what? It is map one clubhouse, Casa de Campo. Two bands from G2, five from Space Station, seven wins for G2, one draw, two losses, three wins for SSG, and one draw. There's a lot for SSG to study when it comes to strategies that G2 can bring on this map specifically. Yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot more than Space Station, for sure. You're looking at 10 maps versus three maps. And I mean, we know that both of these teams have, you know, formidable coaches behind them. G2 kind of well-renowned for their, their uh, preparation, counter stratting I, I guess you could say, you know, the, the, the style of play that their team, the, the teams that they're facing. So even with those three maps to study, I'm sure that Chaz and Sue are the coaches for, and, and analysts, for G2 will have done some good work. But you know, SSG, they have, you know, a smorgasbord of, uh, of VODs to review, but the question is, you know, what's G2, is G2 going to bring something new that we haven't seen before? Or SSG for that matter, there's still a lot of undiscovered stuff on Clubhouse, right? We haven't really seen everything fully played out. We, we still struggle to find someone really playing the bar defense and making that work, so you never know, maybe, yeah, uh, right. maybe we're going to see something new. But I want to talk about operator bans. Time and time again, we've seen Rampy on the Ash, and when Ash is banned against Rampy, guess what? He's not ramping it up too well, I have to say. It's I mean, been a bit of a problem for some players. We've seen uh, G2 ban Ash about three times. I think the Specifically last... Specifically uh, against... Uh, against a certain European player we've seen perform very well. Never heard uh, of him. Nah, joy Joystick's a scary person on Ash. Uh, I don't know if, if they look the same way at Rampy for that, or if they are going to try and hit more of the, the strategical stuff, maybe an Echo or, or Maestro. Well, one of the great things about this matchup, and I'm, I mean, this is an international event, so this might not be particularly special, but you know, G2 is so familiar with playing all of those European teams. And finally, we have a clash across the seas. Um, G2 and Space Station, it, it's not a game that we get to see often, and it's certainly a game that <laughs> SSG, and everyone wants to beat G2, SSG have that in their sights, and G2 have you know, a new and different opponent to study, and there's a lot of interesting things to talk about for Space Station. Yeah, I wonder what their band is going to be looking like. You talked about a possible Monty band, for example. We saw how many times have we seen Pengu playing it. Well, I, I don't think they're going to ban Monty if they play on uh, Villa. I think they're just going to hope that Echo is let through, right? Specifically on, to Clubhouse. On Clubhouse, I don't think they're going to they're going to go. For, they're probably going to go for Valk or Maverick at assume unless G2 takes Maverick. And that's the thing because we've seen so much, so many teams actually replace Habana with the Maverick playing Thermite Maverick and using the Maverick to open up the kitchen hatch. You're yeah. afraid of the C4. Pulse is definitely something that you have to always keep in the back of your mind, playing in the front side of Armory. But 
at least you can not really worry too much about impact tricks. And those have definitely been something that Kitchen Hatch has been a big part of. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this part of the show. Our intro for our third matchup of the day. Myself and my lovely Series 3 Chibis here will be enjoying the match alongside my great analysts. I hope you check them out in just a bit. But it's all back up to our casters, Kix and Taro. I'm sure you've, you're done wiping all those tears away after that wonderful video, Parky Boy. But it's time to take it back. Enjoy it, boys. Thank you so much, Milos, and thank you so much to the rest of the analyst desk. We have our world champions going up against the team that has proven to be one of the best teams in North America on LAN, I don't know, probably over the last four months or so in Space Station. No, I completely agree. Space Station having an excellent role. I think the real question in a lot of people's minds going up against a team like G2 is can they really withstand the pressure? As all things considered, they're a less experienced team. Right, and the other thing about these two teams is that they almost exclusively scrimmed with each other at DreamHack Winter just a couple yep. months ago. Now, mind you, this was before we saw G2 at a bit of a step back in terms of their success in Pro League and it, across all the games that they played. It was also before Sua got picked up as the secondary coach slash analyst for this team. And I'll just tell you from my own experience of being able to see what they've been working on this weekend, Oh my my. Yeah, I, I could tell you as well from my own experience, knowing Sua, that he does put in a lot of work. Say what you will about the man, but work, 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 he does. And supporting Shaz and the coaching staff, that's got to be so good for G2 going into this match, knowing they have all that backing. On the other hand, I mean, you do have a really good coach in, Ly in Lycan over at SSG as well. So there's definitely, you know, pole for pole. If you hear the way that G2 speaks about SSG, they speak so highly of the potential of the roster and of their current success. And I think the performance in Pro League notwithstanding, Space Station have had a pretty good run over the last couple months, coming just a hair close to getting the qualifier spot uh, through DreamHack Winter. And then, of course, their run through USN, finishing and falling in the semifinals to Rogue, who then ended up winning the whole darn thing. And then, of course, they barnstormed through the qualifiers and didn't have to drop a single matchup, winning through the winner's bracket to get NA spot when under pressure, they tend to have some issues, but yeah. over the last couple months, whether it be online or offline, I think they've risen to the challenge quite a bit, and this will be the biggest challenge they've ever had. I mean, that's really the story. Again, as we discussed earlier, it's the pressure. Can SSG handle it? Because we, I mean, we all know G2 is going to be perfectly fine no matter what match they're playing, no matter who they're playing against in terms of mental game. It all comes down to usually their preparedness and whether or not their internal comms are working. On the side of SSG, I think they're a really passionate team. I certainly think they're one of the greatest up-and-comers right now, one of the rising stories in Siege. But can they retain that rise? Can they keep it moving forward is the real question. And this is really about as difficult a test as you can get when you're growing as a team. Playing against G2, it doesn't get harder than this in terms of an experienced squad that knows their stuff and is going to be focused throughout the entire match. That is G2. The thing with the Space Station is that they rely a lot on Bosco. He came out of the group sure. stages with some of the best stats of any individual player. He was backed up not too far behind by Rampy on the team. The biggest issue with Space Station is the disparity between the top and the bottom. Going through Pro League and in the live matches as well, if Redeemer, Thinking Nate, and Chala do not show up and show up well, then the rest of the team struggles, and they struggle a lot. And with a team like G2, typically that whole team is going to pull their weight. You need to be able to do that with Space Station on every single one of those five members or else they're going to be in a big, I would guess, probably hole and set back today against G2. I absolutely agree. We have seen, though, from SSG throughout this tournament that uh, they do have moments where everyone stands up, everyone presents themselves, and uh, they have an excellent match because of that. Well, with that said, we're going to toss to a very short video, and then we'll get started with the matchup shortly thereafter. So enjoy the content, and we'll see you in a couple minutes. Well, currently we have, we're struggling with that in-game leading because the current meta is just aggression everywhere. If you lose a player, they will just lash out and try to get back the man count, so you don't really have time for setup strategies anymore in that regard. So currently a good in-game leader is probably having a good team that can communicate with each other. So if I would replace myself in the team, it would probably be Livin, seeing as he's the closest person to be as good as I am. Well, I, I kind of used to have pre-game rituals. I used to eat a lot of cheeseburgers ahead of the games. Uh, now I don't live close to McDonald's anymore, so I can't do that. 
Uh, I guess it's just drinking Red Bull just when we start practice and then one, one before the game starts as well. Yeah, the, the funny stories from our team is Goga. Literally, he does something weird that you don't understand every day. He, he's just showing up, oh, no, I have the wrong pants, I don't have the team jersey, I don't have this or that, and then it's like, oh, I forgot my headset. <laughs> Sometimes you wonder if he's really there. Well, last year, I, I'm, I, we don't remember it, like straight up. You, you get that, such a rush and such a high when you win. But I mean, like you take off the Rio now that we've won a f quite a few events in a row. Or well, not in a row, but we won quite a few events. It just turns into kind of like normal, you know? Like after Rio, I don't even think that we had that much of a go in or a push. Like, you know, it just was, okay, let's go home and practice for the next event. Oh, um, when I realized I was the best player in the world is kind of when I was born. Like, you know, there were light rays straight from the skies down onto me. Um, and then since then I had this glowing aura of just awesomeness. Well, the loudest player in our team is probably me. I get quite angry sometimes when we play really bad. Other than that, go against the one who shouts the same word five or six times in a row. You ever have that problem where you win so many events you don't know how many you've won in a row? Yeah, it seems that uh, Fabian has that problem right, right this minute, yeah. You just win so many, they just all kind of blur together. I mean, you do, at some point, everybody's going to start losing track, if we're being honest. I mean, if they take this event... Oh, boy. Don't get ahead of yourself. they got to get past SSG first. That's true. They do have to get past SSG. And even after, if they get past SSG, big if there, too, there's a lot of other hurdles. So I think that this is probably, we've talked about this before already through the event. It's probably the most competitive event we've ever had in Siege, and the driving force behind it is so much stronger than it's ever been. But ladies and gentlemen, we finally have the match ready for you. Again, map number one going to be Clubhouse, and we're going to load right on in. Interesting map choice here, and always one that ends up being an incredibly interesting map for the way that the attackers can try and breach these defensive holds. Now, it had the distinction of being the most defender, defender sided map in the map pool for such a long period of time, I think, that all the rest that have caught up to it still haven't been given the same spotlight that, that mm. you know, Clubhouse gets. So, if you can manage to pull two or three rounds on attack, away from the defenders, and early on, I think that bodes well for your success throughout the rest of the map, whether you're starting on defense or starting on attack. Well, if you get them early on, then it's going to be even more valuable. But honestly, a round, is a round, on, a round on attack is a round period, and every single one that you can pull away from the defensive team, so valuable. We'll see the bands come out. Ying, Monty, Valkyrie, and Maestro. Nothing at all to surprise any of us. Pretty standard stuff here. Monty is uh, one of the more interesting ones, of course, but yeah, pretty common as well. It's going to be a very powerful operator that can push through pretty much anything that the defense has to offer. Just eliminate it. Easy peasy. Ying also being taken out instead of the glass, as is often your two options. You can either get rid of somebody who sees through smokes or somebody who can see through flashes. It's up to you. There's that Maestro ban as well. I find that the Redeemer, once known as being such a strong Echo player, has been eclipsed almost by his Maestro play. I mean... How much of that is Redeemer being more comfortable on that operator? How much of it is okay, Redeemer being less comfortable on Echo and more easily thinking. countered? And how much of it is just Maestro being an absolute monster when it comes to defense? With I that Alda and the Evil Eyes being able, able to give you different insight to where the attackers are coming from than a Yokai don't like. I honestly think that Echo overall, okay, Maestro and Echo, flat out, pretty much the same role. They do very similar things. Echo is a little bit more on the team support oriented side, where he allows other people to get kills with using his ability, and he has a lot more information gathering potential because his drones are invisible. On Maestro's side, I feel like it's more the individual fragging power, and a big part of that is, of course, yeah, because his does direct damage. But, uh, Forget the evil eyes for a second. It's mostly the Alda, as you said. That is such a huge force for a Maestro, and it's why we see him banned very often. Redeemer is a really interesting player, and I'm glad you referenced him because he's had some on and off days. When he's on, when he's uh, present, he's so very powerful, though. And put him on Echo, put him on Maestro, either or, and he's going to perform. We saw even in the group stages some clutches from Redeemer managing to keep his team in the running. So. 
it's always nice to see that from him, especially considering he's a, such a hardcore support player. Uh, inches away from a kill here is Jonas, but he's going to miss the opportunity. Flash has come in, and he might just pay for his aggression. But no, it's going to be support from the alibi of Kanto Riketti, possibly also blind on these blue stairs. It's a hustle here, though, and Pengu and Kanto are going to come out on top. Down go both of your three speeds. Well, two of the three, at least. Space Station have lost a lot of manpower very early on, and it's going to get even worse as Fabian eliminates Redeemer, leaving just Bosco and Thinking Nate. The round seems all but over, and Parker, we're a minute in. It's a very bold move to be able to just jump two people in through a tiny window and get absolutely gunned down the moment that you try to hit that vault key. Yeah. I think it was the right call, given the intel that they had, but I think the bigger issue was that the intel was not the best across the board, so. I mean, another thing, we've seen G2 do what they just did there multiple times in the past, and that is, oh, my roamer's being pressured, he's close to the site, take one of the anchors and support that roamer. Just double down. G2 are really well known for doing that as of late, and it's dangerous as SSG to see an opportunity, a potential pick, and double down to commit to that push and lose even more manpower. Why? Because it's an awkward fight to SSG's disadvantage that they honestly just shouldn't have taken. Other ways to clear that area. Space Station's got a minute to work with, but they have almost no utility. Bosco is to be able to find what gadgets he can, but other than that, it's a jackal with two smokes to really lead the way here. One of those smokes will get tossed down in front of Goga's mirror window, just on church wall, so that you can have Space Station try to pressure on it. The Alibi getting tracked as well, just to try to put some pressure on the G2 offsite players. Penker's been down in the ensuing fray. That, that smoke is about to clear in just a second, and you're gonna have to see Space Station get a little bit faster. Pengu set back up, and G2 realizes that it's gonna be a push over through Moto's side. It's gonna be Jonas trying to contest against them, and it's Thinking Nade that falls, leaving Bosco in an almost hopeless and unwinnable situation. It's languishing and treading water, waiting to see if he can find a head, but no, a perfect start for G2. Fabian gets his second kill, and he shuts the door on any heroics from Bosco. What a round there from Fabian, and G2 as a whole. Three kills for Fabian, right off the bat. A lot of those pretty tight angles as well. A big part of that round, though, just comes down to Pengu and Cancer Aketi by Blue Stairs, managing to lock out the attacking team. Following that, Vavian going from place to place, whether in Dirt Tunnel or in Sight, just fragging out. You gotta admire SSG. They never gave up in that round, but at the same time, they pretty much lost it as soon as they failed to do any damage by Blue Stairs. Yeah, you lost one of your Hard Breachers who's gonna be tasked with taking out those hatches. If you can get them after, you know, one of the defenders will likely impact trick the hatch that's looking Attack up in the kitchen. And, and then on top of that, you lose your hard breacher, your last hard breacher and redeemer immediately afterwards. Just tries to solo entry through dirt. Looked like he didn't even have a drone escort. And there was Fabian there, just waiting, very patiently playing an elbow of that dirt tunnel with the MP5. It was a couple, what, one, two bullets. That's all it took. Yeah. So you complete church the site that most teams win the first round, and then you go up to CCTV and gym. Now, some teams are a bit shakier on CCTV, and some teams are a bit shakier on the gym side of things. Typically, it tends to be the gym master bedroom side. CCTV does get, I would say, a better rate of success, depending on how you play it. I think overall, the rate of success for gym is slightly higher, technically, with a lot but, of play rate. But like Attackers half the play rate. Right. So the Attackers statistics are askew. I think that overall cash is probably the better site. And that's why we see teams more often than not going there. So yeah, not terribly surprising to see G2 here. Of course, if they win this defense, they will go to gym as their third site because no, nobody goes to bar. It, ha it actually, <laughs> it's been played a few times and I think it has one of the lowest success rates uh, of any site in the entire competitive map pool. This is actually just, this right here is, is interesting and can be a, a major issue if not played correctly. Yeah. A lot of teams will rappel upside down and use the, the blowtorch above because you can get picked off very easily if there's nobody watching and covering for you. Now there was cover fire from Redeemer and the wall leading into CCTV successfully opened up. Redeemer sees somebody playing on the mirror window inside of Lounge and that's an awkward position to play. I believe it's Giannis on that spot. But because his mute jammers were unable to deter the drones, he will, his play Attackers is given away. Bomb. Potentially a flank from stock could see Jonas being taken out very easily here. But that's 
potential. Not a guarantee. It's on SSG to seize that opportunity. Rampy's gonna eat some damage in an initial gunfight, and very low. I'm sure with how much time is left in the round, SSG's gonna decide to reset him. But uh, that is going to cost them a few seconds. This is not that abnormal to see teams contesting lounge. In fact, Space Station has actually done a, st a strategy similar to this involving yep. Castle barricades, but they'll usually castle off the double doors leading over towards lounge and then have somebody playing behind a deployable shield at the bottom of that half step. That's just behind Jonas. Also sounds like a frag grenade of Rampy after he'd taken a bit of damage, goes off, but doesn't get anything in the process. And now Space Station, who have taken about a minute and 40, will reset Rampy and wonder exactly where to go to next. Keep in mind, Jonas has not been shaken off of his position by the front door. Fabian is there for supporting fire if need be, and the castle can be pushed on up. Ensuing fray, Jonas will take just a tiny bit of his HP, but oh, Fabian grabs one, shut down by Bosco. Jonas is not able to wrangle the bodies he wants, but Pengu takes down one. And Jonas gets pressured from two angles, completely blinded. He might be in really bad shape. Pengu comes down to the rescue as Jonas just waits so patiently before he gets finished off by Chala. Well, this is a very even back and forth between the teams where they lose two bodies each. G2 very much in the better position as all they need to do just wait 30 seconds. SSG don't have a whole lot of control and they're looking to get Garage in their favor, but they have yet to even take out Default Cam, which is not what you want to be seeing if you're SSG fan. Especially not that. Kit or Ketty, a very tight angle onto Chala, and down he goes. Goes for a second, gets it and a third! Excellent gunplay from Cantor or Ketty, and all of SSG are felled. It's usually a place that you'll see an ACOG play there, but what man, what a monstrous performance by Kanto, and exactly what you expect yep. out of the Finn. When he's playing at his best, he can completely dominate games and completely dominate rounds, and that's exactly what we just saw. Though that was more of an issue from Space Station, just having nothing to really flush Kanto out. A lot of teams will play up top on the Raptors in Garage, usually with an ADS or two, maybe a Mute Jammer. Makes it very difficult to drone you, makes it very difficult to push you as well. I'd imagine that was the circumstances in which Kanto Ricchetti found himself. And the circumstances in which Space Station found, a lot of people have at the hands of Kanto Ricchetti. Uh, Kanto Ricchetti has some of the best mechanical skill of any player in this game. And if you don't believe me, see the last round, please. Now, going on to round number three, of course, it's going to be Jim, as we discussed in the previous round. You win on cash, you win on basement, you got to go somewhere. It's not going to be bar. You're going to go to Jim. This is comparable to cash. I'd say the difference in the site is slight. And, I don't know, most teams prefer cash, but Jim is still very defensible. The biggest, the biggest issue that you have with Jim is that there's one site where you really can't rotate out of without having to go through another site. Take a look at CCTV cash. If you lose control of CCTV, you got cash next to it, and then you have the garage. You've got opportunities to rotate if you need. You've also got the stairs not too far away. But when you look at Gym Master, the Gym side, where do you rotate to? You can either rotate towards Jacuzzi Wall, which almost always gets opened up by teams, or you have to rotate back into the bedroom. Sometimes, there's just nowhere to go. And if you also lose construction, then that could end up being the entire round because you get pinched and pinned down. I think that's why a lot of teams prefer to go to Cash, because construction is much more of an influence over Gym. It's an odd way that it influences it, though. It depends on how you set yourself up as a defensive team. If you're set up inside of office and you leave yourself exposed to potentially lose two picks early on, and you lose control of construction, and it's not something you're trying to contest with, like a mirror window, then, yeah, it's not a great situation as a defensive team. But you can hold office from the hallway quite easily, depending on how you're playing it and how the enemy's attacking it. So it's situational, of course, but... In this moment, right now, G2 trying to hold on to Cash to extend their sight and have just generally more control and delaying the round is the main objective of the defender, so why not? See some damage just dished out onto Bosco and Cantor Kenny is, oh man, I don't think he knows how many players are on the other side of that wall, but he's gonna fall back and Jonas as well. This is the right call from G2. Probably read that SSG was very focused on taking control of cash. They don't need to fight it. I wonder how much of that was too early of a fallback because we've seen teams, uh, you know, defend cash till the bitter end. Yeah. We're talking, we're talking two minutes full of absolute control that's now completely gone. But the one benefit that Space or that G2 has is that they might have fallen off, but Space Station hasn't really done much with the control. Yeah. And you're right, there are teams that will defend to the bitter end and be successful in that endeavor. Right. Like, 
here, I agree with you. Space Station got control of cash at about a one minute 40 mark, and we're 40 minutes past that almost, or 40, yeah, we're 40 minutes past that, Parker. It's been a long match, kid. It's been a long match, Parker. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they haven't done a whole lot with it. But there is opportunity now for Fabian to be able to come in on a flank as he's made his way up blue. That has the opportunity to now go up red, as we like to name things after colors for ease bomb. and ultimate convenience. Speed of calls. Now that we have control of construction for SSG, and we can see that that's the case, the next impediment for Space Station is going to be open up that bomb construction wall. For the time being, there's been very minimal opportunity to do so. And there you go, they're just going to forego it. There's Pengu Bosco, will trade him off immediately as the bandit falls, and the Jaeger is up next. As Kanto Ricchetti turns his back, and Bosco will pick up yet another. So it's time for Fabian to re-engage. Goga shreds through Bosco, and we once again have a 3v3. There's not a lot of time to work with for Space Station. This could just end up being to their detriment. But hey, they're making it work, and Rampy and Chow will pick up two. Fabian will have to go for a plant denial, but he'll miss! Oh, he misread that, but it's enough to shake Thinking Nate off of the plant. Which could buy Fabian enough time to get on up, depending on what he's gonna do, but he's gonna have two bodies watching him. Gonna be a hairy situation to get around. One body prone on the floor. He'll miss trade, actually, but it doesn't matter because there's two more bodies still left upright. And even though the diffuser gets down successfully, Space Station get the final kill right as it goes down and pick up their very first round. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we have a match. SSG, their first round, as you said, Parker. And a big part of that actually was what was brought up earlier. Too quick of a rotation away from Cash as it turns out. And after cash was lost, there was no control on construction door. Notice how many picks Bosco got essentially for free, simply peeking from construction. That's dangerous. Should not be allowed to happen. And G2 gave up a whole lot because of it. Once they lost that manpower, a lot of the more pivotal anchors were done away with by Bosco, allowing the rest of SSG to collapse into the site and clean up shop. Now, of course, we get to go back downstairs. And you gotta imagine, this is where G2 starts to shine again on one of their more preferred sites. I was not entirely convinced that we that Space Station had a proper execution after they double vaulted in that window, but I mean, that's also hard to say what the actual execution was gonna be, because your strategy doesn't usually revolve around, hey, let's all jump through the same window. No, I mean, I agree with you, to be honest, Parker. Uh, looking at that last round, I thought that SSG were gonna lose it just based on the fact that their attack strategy was all, all over the place. But they managed to make it work off pure fragging power. So what can you change about Church in that case? What can you change about this particular site? The alibi trick that G2 ran against Mantis and is now using once again the space station on this map. Usually just to try and hold off on what? CCTV above and then hold the top of blue? Appears to be the way that Kanto Ricchetti's gonna play this. He'll make his nest upstairs, might even have some presence in the garage. It's actually gonna be Pengu, so not Kanto. He'll continue on over towards the side of construction. So G2... Oh, construction. <laughs> G2 have adjusted... Right. What? G2... <laughs> G2 have adjusted their roam quite substantially. They're not holding on to the top of blue as firmly as they had in the previous round. That could just have been the fact that G2 got caught in a rotation, but it is not really relevant in this round. As the flashes start coming out on top of Catwalk, it's an easy spray for Kanto or Kenny. He's going for a second and just narrowly missing the shots. Units by oil pit, gonna throw it at C4, but it will miss. Pengu also holding on to that garage doorway, and it's still full control for G2 inside of garage, because they double down time and time again, and they have three players holding on to this position. They might lose it yet, though, as Space Station are coming in fierce and coming in fast. By actually being useful there, it will detect somebody outside of garage. Jackal track on Pengu, and he is spotted in the pixel angle. That's unfortunate for Kanto Ricchetti. Doesn't do any damage to him though, so I guess not the end of, a world, of the world. Pengu going for a play and a half, and he's gonna get it! Shala goes down, and on low HP, it doesn't seem like the attackers are aware of his position. He might get another, and he will! What a play from Pengu! The patience pays off! And Space Station Gaming, once again, on a basement attack, very quickly find themselves in a two versus five. This is just a strategy that Space Station never has to encounter in North America, which is a heavy garage presence on church, but something that a couple teams in Europe do, and because say, hey, that's the home region of G2, they need to be aware of that and practice that. Like I mentioned, we saw it quite a bit, actually, in the Mantis FPS game. Now, the one difference was that Mantis 
were hitting their shots. So far, Space Station haven't necessarily been as accurate as the Korean team that seemed to give so much trouble to G2. A rotate will come in from Space Station, and it's Redeemer and Thinking Nade, this time with Bosco Silence. The Jackal will try to use his smokes as best as he can. Amidst the smoking, it's gunned down by Kanto Ricchetti on a poor peak, leaving Redeemer to use his utility, but the look on his face says, I know what's gonna happen next. A 1v5 with 30 seconds to go. He's got hope in the fact that both Pengu, Jonas, and Kanto are really low. Well, this Thermite's gonna be in a bit of trouble. This entire move is being tele <laughs> just broadcast to the rest of his team, and well, he you know, duels the bearing nine, but can auto duel the T5 SMG. A strange end there as Redeemer manages to last a lot longer than people expected. But Church goes the way of the defenders more often than not, and it's no strange, no stranger for G2 this time. Yeah, we're in the often right now, and G2 really setting down the law. Up 3-1, but it's again defense clubhouse, so there's still a match yet. We're gonna go into No, 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 you don't dab on camera, come on. Did he? He dabbed on the camera, Michael. Didn't even catch you. Know. That is unfortunate, though. We're gonna be going to Cash next. And the way that Cash played out last time mm, was very interesting from SSG. Honestly, they just lost a lot of gunfights off-site. A lot of it had to get, come down to how they were trying to contest in lounge. I failed with contention ultimately was the downfall of SSG as they barely even got to the site, it felt like, for the majority of that round. Their presence was a little bit lackluster, and garage control being a focus was not the right call in that situation. What well, was the right call for G2? Why, <laughs> it certainly was, Parker. Like I said, it's, just, it's, it's not something that Space Station is used to having to deal with. And because of that, how, I mean, Lycan's a great coach. There's obviously been enough VODs for them to review on Clubhouse, and in particular, G2's performance on Clubhouse. You have to be able to adapt and confront the challenges head on. But there was nothing that I saw on either of the church attacks that came out from SSG that led me to believe that their entry was good enough to establish the control that they needed. Be it at the top of blue, be it inside of Garage, they just got their wings clipped before they could actually take flight. So, look at round five, Cash CCTV. It was a struggle for Space Station on Jim Bedroom, but they made it work. In large part was because they were able to take control of cash so fast. On this particular site, if you've got control of cash, then you're likely getting a plant down. Your focus needs to be elsewhere. It happens to be, for most teams, on Garage, which is where Thinking Nate is looking and proved to be so tremendously difficult for SSG on the previous round. Server wall. Looks like denied. Possibly an impact through the Maverick hole. And it is possible, does happen, and yes, it was indeed an impact. The second one goes out, though, in the exothermic charge. Not on the wall that time, so poor, poor time management there from Pengu. But if we're being honest, getting one exothermic charge is, is pretty valuable. And uh, through a Maverick hole, no less, just impressive. Trying to get the wall open. Redeemer might not know that this is an option, but he's going for it anyway. And the commitment pays off. Wall open now, despite the impact tricking earlier. Bosco looking on a long angle towards Garage, and seems to be cutting off rotation here. Oh, Kanto Ricchetti can go for a beautiful run out now, just waiting to see, but there's nobody there, at least for the time being. Reading if anyone's up at the top, there's one body, but he won't be able to see it in time. Kanto, can you lean in as close to the monitor as you can? No, he's not gonna do this. This is where Kanto Ricchetti's missing that ACOG right now, yeah, that's... unfortunately. Did Jaeger have ACOG? I wasn't making a joke about that, I was just making it ACOG in general. Anyway, Chala outside of, Chala outside of Garage, and uh, he will finally be taken out by Cantor Ketty, who finds the angle. The patience, seriously impressive from the Finn. It opened up that wall, he knew there was somebody there, that's where he was seated. Now the rest of SSG who just tried to plot on in through Garage will find that they are one number shorter. As down goes Redeemer, and Thinking Nade will still have control up there. Not gonna be much for Rampy as Fabian is there to cut him down, and it's a 2v5. Hasn't really been much from Space Station on many of these offenses, but there's Bosco coming to the rescue. He finds his fate at the hands of an SMG 11, and then Fabian tosses it out, and it's an explosive round with that C4. And we'll finish that off. Four to one right now. That's the number that you wanna have on a defense, yep. on Clubhouse. This is exactly where you want to be as G2. You twist the knife, you get 5-1, and you head into the next half. You're pretty comfy. 
at that point. Yeah, and if you end at 4-2, you're still in a decent spot. I mean, that's a predictable result. But 5-1 uh, off, obviously optimal here for uh, G2. They look at, they're looking like they could potentially take it as well. It looks like it's going to be a clash from Fabian. Which is quite interesting. Nope, six pick. Okay, that makes a whole lot more sense. We've seen, okay, now here's the reason that makes sense. We've seen G2 try to make cash, or Clash work Defend many times before. Not in her current build that I can recall, but in the past, when even when she had the, the quick swap, it was just not something that I think G2 were really a fan of. Uh, so every time G2 needs to take a fight, it seems like they prefer to have an SMG, a shotgun, whatever it is, but a shield on defense seems to limit their roaming potential. I can see why or Clash would be useful on this site, though, if any, for holding on to Cash. Reinforcing the wall. Look at that. Fabian and Cantor, first and fourth in kills remaining. per round of the players remaining in the tournament. Oh, also, yeah, Fabian technically, I think, has a lower KDR than Cantor, Kenny, but he has more kills. Fabian has really been fragging this tournament. They've also played so few rounds in comparison to their peers. They made it out of group stages with great efficiency. Yeah. I think it was something like Cantor only played like 40 or 50 rounds, and then the next that it was on the infographic was like 80 or 90, which is astonishing, the disparity between them. It was something like that. Well, Kanto had like 40 kills. It was, it was 79 and 80 or something like that. But that's from the group stages. Don't quote me on those numbers. Yeah, nor me. Jolly gonna be looking to open up the Jacuzzi wall along with Redeemer. Dual hard destructors here for Space Station. They had to have known it's going to be a gym defense. So I'm curious what they want to use Habana for. It's possible they were just predicting a bandit trick, which is fair. Better safe than sorry. Bring the extra hard destruction, I say. But uh, it is going to limit the other potential utility that Space Station could bring. For example, Glaz or something along those lines. Space Station realized that fighting through construction was not exactly what they wanted to try and accomplish this time. Yeah. So what does G2 do? G2 knows, and they respond immediately. Kanto lighting a body up. There's going to be Bosco, who will manage to survive that tussle. He's a little worse for wear. He's on flashing HP and will likely need a reset at some point. It's an encounter that could be very scary for the team because the disruption that is offered and the lifeline that comes out from Bosco will be very pivotal on a much closer quarters take that will occur on Gym Master rather than a more open an easier to manage site. Here we go, Kanto's trying it again. I can't. I can imagine if it weren't for that tree, Kanto or Kenny would have been fragging right now. But just a lot of visual obstructions right now for Kanto or Kenny. He's still trying to make it work. But meanwhile, the jacuzzi wall is already open. The crazy thing is, is they don't even need Kanto for the execute right now because. SSG's not pushing at all. They're just sitting and waiting. And I think that it's an issue with SSG because the drone coverage doesn't really appear to be all that strong. I don't know if Fabian's been found out at all. Kanto finally gets Bosco, but thinking Nade was primed and ready. He avenges his fallen comrade and puts us back into a 4v4. Once again, as we've seen many times, it's going to come down to Fabian to be the real wild card here. A goo mine gets triggered as Pengu manages to evade the projectiles getting tossed in. He's going to go flashbang and it'll push Pengu off of that bathroom mirror window. Which means that you'll have to play it from a much greater distance back. If there's anybody who's going to be able to land those shots on G2, it's probably going to be Pengu when that Kanto is down. Finally, Fabian gets spotted, but he'll fell Chala. Oh, no. The Ivana just missing the shots that are required to take out the pulse. Blow the cardiac sensor and you know that you've downed him, but Fabian not confident in his abilities. As Giannis falls on sight, there's Pengu pistol out. Pengu misses a whole whack of shots before getting Redeemer re-engaging. Missing. Gogo will need to get back up to sight. Waiting the push! Pengu with the pistol doesn't even need to reload. And a 5-1 split will be the first half for G2's defense here on Clubhouse. Solid defense here for G2 so far. But now they're going to have to adjust and move over to attack. And this is where the potential is for SSG. Going to be close still. And I got to be honest, based on what we saw from that first half, it just seems like SSG are afraid to take fights. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the players from SSG in that last round were just sitting on the roof for a good portion of the round. 
I have no idea what their plan was. Possible they were just trying to dynamically allocate manpower to either A, Jacuzzi Balcony, or B, the uh, Balcony facing into Jim. I understand the logic there where, yeah, okay, if there's a weakness on the South Balcony, we can go there, or West Balcony, we can go there. But it would be nice for SSG to just pick a push and stick to it. Also, we have been seeing, or we saw a lot by, uh, from G2, Cantor Eddie specifically, a lot of uh, deep flanks, runouts as well. And these angles on Clubhouse especially should be pretty easy for SSG to deny, if we're being honest. It, this is not a runout map. Right. I want to talk just for a little bit about what happened with G2 on defense there. Now, a 5-1 scoreline can be very deceptive because you can still emerge with a 5-1 but those could be very back and forth rounds. Right. Only time that there was an opportunity for Space Station having control of the site to plant Diffuser was on Gym Master, and it was when they were in a 1v3. The rest of the time, they barely even came close to the site, let alone have control of it. There was no post-plant circumstance in which SSG had to win. And there was no clutch potential for G2 because no clutches needed to be there. Outside of the, of course, 1v3 that fell apart for G2. It really just speaks to the dominance of G2 on that half. And that's more of a troubling sign than that 5-1 scoreline. Because you're not winning, you're winning big. Now, Space Station had an opportunity there to take a tactical timeout. If they lose this round, they're going to be taking a timeout on a 6-1 match point scenario. And we've seen teams do that, and a lot of times it ends up being way too late. Possible they just thought the, hand, the uh, half transition was going to be enough. Plus, they don't exactly know what to adjust for yet because they haven't played against G2's attack. And that's the scary thing about being at 5-1. You've got so little breathing room. I know you're on the advantageous side now, but if you lose, it's done. Wow, damage being done to Chala. Speaking of, I, he got nothing out of that. Went for a pre-fire trying to get the Maverick. Maybe a right call if you're trying to get an advantage, but it worked against him. Rampy's peak, though, will work for him. He's also put down a C4 for a counter peak. Er, Rampy's gonna get shut down from above, though, from Freezer instead of a peak from the main hallway. Good communication there from G2 to relay what is covered and come from the other angles. I don't know what, why Pengu is waiting. I'm assuming he's just guessing that there's gonna be an impact trick, maybe, but. The only person who's likely got impacts, or even possible to have impacts, would be yeah. Mosco. The four was not prepped for an impact, so I'm not sure. I was, I was wondering oh. if he was just waiting for a it's, it, was, it was the Mute Jammer. Yeah, it was Rampy's Mute Jammer. You can put it on the little black shelf, and it can That's right. block a little bit of that drop down. But because That's you right. need so many, you need the Habanas you know, to detonate, you, if some of them are blocked, then it's going to be, maybe you won't open it up. You need four of the six. Yep, four of the so six. I, think, I think that's why he had the Hibana X Keros. He might have even just doubled up, realizing, hey, we don't need that utility. Yep. There's 45 seconds left. It's a 4v4. You'd lit up Chala earlier on when Kanto saw him through the hatch. And then parts of it carved open by the Maverick. Three bodies from G2 inside a kitchen. They're just going to drop and go for it. And the only coverage is the Yokai drone from Redeemer. Goga trying to go for a plant. There's a yokai there. Redeemer, are you going to be able to stop it in time? There you go. It's prevented by the yokai as they try to spot the gadget. They'll get it. Bosco takes out Jonas. There's Redeemer to do the work on the Goga. This yokai can't do it. Kanto grabs one and he's in a clutch or kick scenario as Pengu falls as well. Kanto going to hold the wall, but man, a good volley from Thinking Nate will be able to give Space Station a very much needed round and just a tiny bit of breathing room given how dire these circumstances are for them at the moment. Still a 5-2 in favor of G2. Way to go, SSG, on that round. The Echo really paying off. Excellent play from Redeemer inside of the dirt tunnel. He did, well, quite a majority of the hold inside of Arsenal was just Redeemer. If we take a step back and look at it, Yokai Drones denied the defuse going down, and following that, he also managed to get his frags out onto Goga. We also saw, of course, Rampy with that excellent shotgun play, but shut down from Pengu. All the utility play from G2 was pretty solid. Redeemer just barely got that kill, as you saw, but he still got it, and that's what counts. The overall hold from SSG was just relying on Church being an excellent crossfire into Arsenal. And if you have Redeemer to hold backside, the rest of the anchors can hold the push. So, necessary round for SSG, and they will not take the tactical timeout. They're instead going to go to catch. This is a little bit scary if you're SSG. You're playing it 
kind of on the wire. If you lose one round, then you need to take the pause to try and think of a way to counter the way that G2 plays. The problem is, G2 is one of those teams that tend to change their strategy round by round. Ten seconds to go. And you can't get locked into a, fall, uh, into a strategy that's actually not going to work against Five what well, the adjustment will be from G2. So we'll see what actually happens, though. Of course, they haven't committed to that just yet. This is a really interesting mirror setup inside of a garage, a double mirror, and a shield to boot. Nobody spawned over where Rampy was looking for that spawn peak, by the way. Mm. Or was he peeking out? He was at the top of wood. Oh, okay, so, yeah. Nobody spawned over by that side. It was all spawned by the, over by the main doors. There you go. Just in case you were curious where it was. Thank you, Parker. Well, I mean, I wasn't the one controlling the spectator cam, but you're very welcome. Thank you, Marcy. There you go. So you've got Kanto Rakiti on the upside down repel. We'll likely take his blowtorch to the bottom of those CCTV panels, and then you'll have the exothermic charge go down, and it's very routine to be able to take this wall, or so it usually is, barring an impact trick or two. Yeah. Of course, you can't impact trick above this one, but you can below, as the Maverick holes are open. And it looks like Legion wants to do it, but it's not going to work. Thermite gets the wall open. Well done to place that exothermic charge further from the impacts than last time. Garage is such an important part of Space Station Gaming's defense here, as you can see, based on those dual mirror windows as well, and the fact that Redeemer, the Echo player, is inside of Garage. He is going to be such an important anchor to lose should it come to pass. It's going to put more pressure on him to stay alive. Fabian doing his best to get into Garage and clear. He's not going to break the mirror window because he knows if they get control, or by they, I mean G2, if they get control of Garage, then, I mean, you have control of Sight because of those mirror windows. So D2 will be leaving them alone for now, unless they decide to go for a different push. It's going to be the final Logic Bomb going off. And once again, presence on top of this catwalk proved to be a significant issue. If you toss a frag grenade up, missing it for the time being, it's a rotate that will just narrowly miss as neither of the sights from G2 are able to capitalize on this push. They know that if they move on over towards the stairs, they'll get gunned down. There's a second set of stairs, though, and Thinking Nade's perched up there, and he'll go through Jonas. Chala fires back. Man, what a volley as Space Station comes alive, shutting the door on G2, leaving Goga outside, and well, I guess at this point, you kind of got to go for a plant, don't you? Just waiting right in. No impact frag, a flawless round. Michael, blast off for Space Station, two in a row. I remember we were seeing G2 easily locking S out SSG because SSG would not stop just waiting outside, looking for a pick, unsure what to really do. Well, in that round, it seemed like it had gone the opposite direction. G2 pushing into Garage, but unsure exactly how to attain control of Garage. They don't have a Capital. They don't have a Monty. Monty's banned. It was banned by SSG. So, G2 really need to find a new way to take control of Garage moving forward if they want to have success on cash, assuming they want to double down and commit, recommit, in fact, to that Garage take. Because honestly, based on the results we just saw, the right call might just be to, oh, attack somewhere else. Construction is still an option. You don't have to commit to Garage. The problem, of course, being those double mirror windows. It almost seemed like the mirror windows were a taunt for G2, trying to bait them into a Garage push. Space Station do something similar, baiting a team, I think it was at Dreamhack, if I remember correctly, on Bank, where they set up a mirror window inside a janitorial, they popped it, uh -huh. and played very far back over by Skylight, basically invited the team into the site and then completely retook it. A masterful performance. At least I think that was Space Station. My memory is a little blurry as Dreamhack Winter was, what, three months ago? Well, Space, like Space Station, it, it fits their, um, it, it fits them, their identity. They tend to be the team that will bring out the, the, uh, the tricks that will trip up your opponent and uh, cause a lot of problems. Just had a bit of a tactical pause there for a moment. We're get, able to get underway here as it's going to be Jim Bedroom for Space Station. So you called it very correctly, Michael. You don't go to bar and you don't go to stock. It's been played under a dozen times in all three regions of Pro League thus far. Jeez. There's a reason for that. It has a really low win rate. Well, it's just that Jim Master is such a better site by almost every single 
measuring stick? Yeah. So why not go to it, even if it's the site? That teams lose more often than not. We have our very own kiss cam, so there you go. Cheer! Had a lot of that at Rio. There were a lot of kiss cams there. Yeah. So, here we go. Getting everybody ready to start back up. And like you said, Jim, the defense here for SSG. They really need to be able to take this one. We're gonna go to match point if they don't, but this is definitely the best opportunity for G2 to put us there. There's gonna be a lot of investment in this round in terms of strategy, I'm sure, from G2. Upbridge selection kind of hints at a jacuzzi wall take. Not terribly surprising. This is Jim Master, of course. And have some pressure, I'm sure, on those south windows, but it's gonna require clearing out the roamers from SSG inside of Cash, of which there is currently one, and also Bosco in construction to support him. Not much of an extension, uh, extended roam horizontally, though, from SSG. They've actually only got one anchor right now. Redeemer, unsurprisingly. Yeah, it's currently just Redeemer. Well, Bosco's getting back to site now. I mean, he's, he's, I think he's playing construction. I, I'm not sure. He keeps moving back and forth. But uh, yeah, okay, two anchors, and the one coming back, Thinking Nade, will be cut down, punished for his positioning early in the round. Unfortunate to see, but it does happen. It's a good pick and a good read, all things considered, for Pengu on that rappel on the stairs, heading up and opens things up by taking out Thinking Nade. Now, at least Thinking Nade is on an operator who doesn't have a ton of utility. Imagining True. that all of those bandit batteries have already been down, you might have a C4 at best. Well, obviously, it's never good to find yourself in a 4v5 hole, but if you're going to lose any operator, it might be that or the castle that I would probably want to go first. Attackers True. have located a bomb. Having the uh, bandit gone is mostly just going to come down to the manpower, of course. First phone call comes out here from Fabian. He's trying to move his way up the main stairs. He's being droned in right now. It looks like by Pengu. SMG 12 out. And this is such a powerful weapon at close range. If Within about 10 meters, he's going to have actually a substantial advantage just based on his rate of fire alone. Shot come in to distract and bait for Fabian, but nobody on SSGs takes that bait. Fabian is uh, as, as of yet unknown on the top of these stairs and in a very powerful position. Checking for a yokai as the IQ of Pengu is on the other side of the map and not really able to do too much with that sensor in order to try to find the electronics. Scary proposition for Fabian if he thinks that he's been undetected, waiting just to bull rush on in, and there's a drone above him that's watching. A good reflexive shot, but Bosco goes down, and there's gonna be another. As Kanto takes out Redeemer, Goga drops, but G2, full control. Rampy, cut off from the site. He's got a couple open holes that he'll try to work through, but ultimately, this is likely gonna be in vain. Taking the time to readjust his hairline, nods at the camera, but Diffuser goes down successfully, and G2 look to push this one towards match point. And he'll do just that. Kanto Ricchetti finishes it. And puts SSG out of their misery on that round. Doesn't waste too much time for Rampy. Jim Master falls in favor of the attackers, as is always tradition with this matchup. And now we can go back down to church for SSG's defense. I expect and hope for SSG that that nod was in fact in response to somebody saying, don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it, next round. Because that's certainly the mentality SSG needs in this situation, to take it round by round. Not having a really fantastic match overall, but they have managed to defend the standard bomb sites here on Clubhouse, which means it's very possible that they can bring it back. The complication is that G2, while they also lost their first gym defense, they managed to win the second one. That means that now SSG has to do the same. It's pretty much gonna go around and around in circles like this on Clubhouse when you have two teams that are as close in skill as G2 and SSG. It does seem though like G2 are winning a lot more of their gunfights in general. SSG are bringing out quite a lot of smart plays, but is that really enough to you know bring this match in their favor? I'm not sure. They get to defend basement though, so gonna be very comfortable in this next round. I mean, the biggest worry here is that if you expect a 4-2 stat line on defending Clubhouse, then SSG has to emulate a 5-2. They can't lose Gym Master twice. Had they been successful that previous round on Gym Master, then I think the odds are in favor of us going towards overtime. Agreed. The fact that they're in a position now where you've got to be perfect on Church, 
Cash, and then Jim. That's a tough proposition for a lot of teams, and not a prospect that a lot of people want to gamble on. And it's, you know, it's also the fact that they're the team on the downturn right now, that they're losing. It's so much pressure. Remember in the pre-match when we talked about how SSG as a team, one of the things that they need to work on as one of the less experienced overall, comparatively, is their ability to remain focused under pressure. I mean, it's something that a lot of teams suffer from, and it, it's, it takes so much time to develop that skill. And there are certain teams who have it down pat, like G2. But they're not the ones under pressure right now because they started on defense. So last time around, that mute jammer that was on Space Station proved to be a bit of a hindrance. It required the bucket Jonas to push in the kitchen to take care of it. Why well, do you battle that? Well, you just don't have the mute jammer. There's none on the board for Space Station. I think the mute was a right call on an operator last time, but they thought otherwise. And it's going to be an Echo Castle combination. Like I noted as we were just starting in this matchup, SSG loves running Castle on this map. It's not really much of a surprise to see the operator here. As you have your typical buck upstairs is tearing up the floors, we'll force some sight lines all the way down to the bomb site. Also be able to cut off any rotates that might happen. And Ping goes out and Jonas comes very close to getting the Mira. I don't know if that's a shot he can make, but he can. the Mira is going to fall off. Yeah, this is a really old angle from back in the beginning, and it's honestly not often used, but it can disable mirror windows, and it, you know, faded into obscurity a while ago. G2, though, the older, oldest players in terms of experience and Siege, they're well aware. It's not a failed impact trick, was it? Oh, Shawa heart beats Bobby, and it's taken out by Goga immediately and swiftly, put in the grave by Bosco. And SSG ends up walking away with a lead on operators after that encounter. He'll quickly be seized by G2 as Kanto Rikitti downs Bosco and finishes him off with one minute to go. And an execute from G2 is coming out over on church side. There's still both Yokai drones out at the moment. It'll be up to Pengu to try to find them. He has his gadget in hand and is looking for them. Whoa. What a shot from Jonas, beheading, thinking nade, and plant going down from the buck as well. Where is the Yokai drone? Not in position. Won't be able to get it as frustration will reign over Redeemer. But Rampy on a flank cuts down Kanto Rikenny, looking for another. Jonas sits inside of sight. A double kill from Rampy. And with Yokai drone still up, this could be good intel. Jonas downed, and that's it. Space Station bail themselves out of a terrible situation and fist bumps across the board. They'll stave off defeat for this round in particular. And it's 6-4 as we head in to round number 11. This could be the miracle run here from SSG, but it's gonna come close. We get to go to Cash next round, and that's a really great spot for them. And also, sounds like gonna take a tactical timeout, give themselves some time to think about how they want to defend this Cash room. But I gotta be honest, Parker, I think that they need to be thinking a little bit for, or forward in the future as defending Jim is going to be the biggest hurdle. And also worth noting, G2 came very close to winning that last round. It was honestly very scary for SSG, but Space Station managed to prevail. That really boiled down to the Yokai drones being able to buy enough time inside of church while Rampy went undetected, pushing up main hallway and then over to the Moto doorway. It's also the information from those Yokai drones, as you yep. astutely pointed out during the clutch, is the calls from the dead teammates on defense for SSG had to have been extremely important, allowing that clutch to happen. It's good to see it. Excellent teamwork. The tactical timeout as well from SSG, just trying to close this one out and possibly be able to discuss what is going on. They're very confident in their abilities, and I was a little bit I would say quick to judge about the fact that they didn't take a timeout when they were facing a 5-1 scoreline at the half. They figured they'd be able to grind out at least one or two sites and then call it when they need it the most. And they take it. They're going to sit on match point until we go to overtime, though. Fabian had teased a blitz, so go on to the Dokubi, and instead of a Rook, we're going to get a Castle as the two six picks for both of these teams. Dokubi will be a major annoyance, but nothing outside of the ordinary for G2. Run the Dokubi pick a number of times. The Castle Barricade, once again, for SSG, or the Castle Barricades, will just try to slow down the advance of G2, who haven't been exactly the quickest to be able to get it. No, they certainly haven't. Their attack strategies are well-coordinated, I would say. The last round, especially. 
I like what uh, G2 were trying to do, pushing in through the church wall. Again, it's an older strategy, but it works. And if you can pull it off, then there's not a whole lot the defense can do to counter you. If you open church wall and you have full control over that engagement, it's a good situation to be in. But Parker, I think that the most crucial part of a church wall push is having somebody on attack sitting at the bottom of main stairs watching main hallway. G2 didn't do that. They didn't have that control. And we've seen so many people, so many teams have that control and give it away and lose the round because of that on attack of the bottom floor during a church take. So, yeah, unfortunate to see from G2. It did cost them the round. And uh, Space Station, I'm sure, very happy about that, as is Rampy, who was the one who flanked through that main hallway. Says, oh, a real early pick. Say goodbye to your only real heart breacher, Goga. Can't plant from the afterlife. He probably can if there's anybody who could. It's probably him. But still, you lose your thermite very early. That's a brazen pick by thinking me. So what do you do now? Well, you rely a lot on your Maverick. And there might actually be a way to cut this wall down. I think it only works on single panels, but Kanto's being just a tiny bit sloppy, and he's about to run out of fuel. Which is hot. I don't think you're going to be able to get in there, boys. You're going to have to go around Wait, somewhere else. Did he use all his fuel? I think he still has a tiny bit left. But I mean, why? It I, I don't know. It's a. It, that was a weird Maverick play. Yeah. It's a soft wall, I think. You know why he does it? Because it shaves out the metal reinforcement, if I recall correctly. And there you go. Now you can open the whole thing up. Oh, he's. Oh, so it you, was reinforced. You do the top, and then you do the bottom, and the metal reinforcement falls off. Clever. I didn't know that Kanto had gone all the way to the edge. And there you go. Now the buck yeah, can turn what was a reinforced wall. Yeah. I didn't even see the wall you before he opened wall. it up. Yeah. It's like magic. I like magic, indeed, Parker. And good coordination there from G2. A little trick that I'm sure you'll see a lot more of in the future. A bomb has been located. Slow going, though, afterwards. A little bit of a uh, blowtorch here left, but uh, it's going to be used to get a kill. Look at that. Cantor Ketty knowing the angles and playing them well. Slinking aid, playing by the A bomb chassis will go down. And here's just a little bit more for G2 to work with on this construction wall. They've established so much control with a decent use of their utility overall. Echo Drone going to be taken out. It's the Okai, at least one of them. That's not great to see from Space Station. They got such an early pick, but it seems like every second pa that passes, G2 is gaining more traction. And here's going to be the issue. Two smoke grenades get tossed deep into the site as Fabian will activate a logic bomb. Bosco pushes out. Oh, and it'll be Redeemer there with Rampy also adding to the tally. It's Pengu to come on in, sees the yokai and all the bodies of Space Station off site. But Chala's there, returns back. Pengu takes down Bosco. He's got the pistol out, but he doesn't hold that diffuser. He'll need to retrieve it. Doesn't have a wealth of time to do so. The clock will continue to run rampant over Pengu as he goes over towards Red Stairs, realizing that being exposed for seven seconds, unideal. The Yokai's might still be in play, but it doesn't really matter. A peel off of the plant from Pengu, and that's all it for time. Save the KD, why not? Space Station will put us to the very final round. As they sit now 6-5, and what a comeback it has been. But, Michael, they will need to do what they have not been able to do so far, which is win the Gym Master site. Mm -hmm. G2 managed it one of two attempts. But it was a close round still. And going to Gym here for the second time, we're going to need to see a repeat of G2's half now by SSG on that defense. They have managed to win a lot of these rounds, but it's come close many times. That last round, in fact, it looked like G2 were gonna be able to take it. They had a lot of control outside of the site, in the periphery, started to push in, and it was an explosive frag fest for SSG to enable a round victory. Then, after the engagement went down, the last two players were aware, so little time, let's just play for the retake if we need to, and it was the right call. Now, a little bit of a little, little bit of a uh, technical pause here while we get everybody situated, but again, potentially the last round of this match. And here's the thing. If we do get to overtime, a huge part of the uh, result of this match is gonna come down to who gets defense first. Because so far what we've seen is cash, both teams are great at defending. Bottom floor, both teams are great at defending. Jim, not so much. Cool thing is, though, if you get defense first, you only have to defend two sides. We'll see. 
Then we'll get back into this one. You want to make a prediction on overtime or not? Um. No, I don't want. I don't want to make that prediction. I just solid no there, Parker. I think I, I genuinely think this could go either way. The last time SSG defended Jim, it was not great. To be honest, but uh, I think they have what it takes to uh, to take this all the way to OT. I think safe prediction. I think it's G2's round to lose. Yes. I think I think this, the safest way to go about this is if G2 play it perfectly. Well, if they play it perfectly, then they can't be stopped. But if they play it well, decent then I think G2 should be able to take this. Push us to map two. This is Space Station's map choice. Game on the line. Mm. Possibility to move on to bank. G2's choice. Finding yourself down a map. You roll the die on a clash. The Deemer will be switching off of the Echo. Saw him playing firmly in the bathroom. Commanding both of those drones, being able to give the information to the rest of his team. Uh-oh. There was a dedicated call, I would imagine, that, hey, this isn't exactly the most beneficial. I don't know if he'll have enough torch to get the whole wall after he missed, and it looks like, indeed, he will just fall off. Well, his goal is to just get so that Goga can go for Yeah, he might just be trying to go for the thermite, yeah. but... Yeah, there it is. It's going to be opened up nice and easy. Not the most efficiency on the map, of course, but I suppose it doesn't really matter in that situation. Yeah, I mean, Kanto's probably now going to head on over to construction, maybe poke a couple holes in the wall. Yeah. Maybe sit spot. and wait, maybe get a, a small entry into office if he needs to. and then Take out Rampy inside of Cash. Yeah, that's that's probably your goal at this point, right? You don't need it to open anything up, all things considered. One thing that is quite beneficial for Space Station is the last time they played on this site, they lost thinking Nade really early as he was trying to come back to site, possibly being recalled by his teammates, and Pengu was there to gun him down. It worked out quite well. But you don't have any casualties this early in. And as Kanto soon discovers, that castle barricade inside a gym doesn't really lead to much. It leads to another castle barricade and reinforced walls. So he'll head on over to the third castle barricade that we've seen. Two of which are on the exterior windows. Here they fixed that. They took out that vault on Clubhouse Roof. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I've I, only heard. Thinking they're going to get one, but from behind, Fabian will at least down Chala. Some decent damage, but the Clash is keeping him alive using that shield, and the support from Space Station is coming out. Bosco with the gas canisters, and oh no, Fabian's being flanked as well from below. This is a bad situation for the Dokumi to find himself in. The C4 will finish him off, but Goga is fragging out. Takes down two as he comes into the building. Nice and even on that scoreline right now. Thinking Nade, though, is on fire on the main stairs. He gets two, but can't get the third. That's three for Goga, in fact, as he starts pushing towards Bosco. It's a shotgun out, I'm sure, and the first blast will miss. But the second is going to be from Rampy, who shuts him down. Space Station, take us to overtime. We're not going to map two yet. How unthinkable was it that you have a 5-1 split on one side, then you move to a 5-2 split on the other, and an incredible comeback. That will surely fire up Space Station and give them tons of confidence and momentum as they go through what could be two or three rounds of overtime here. As you see from the operator lineups popping up in, this, in the audience at least, you at home might not be able to see it just yet. Space Station gets to defend twice. Ooh. <laughs> so, as discussed earlier, if you get to OT on Clubhouse, he who gets to defend first usually wins. That's just how it is on this map, especially when you have such a deadlocked situation like this one, where both teams are capable of defending all of the sites. Jim, yeah, it's a little bit, well, tricky, as it has mixed results for both teams. The only two attacking wins we saw were one for G2 on Jim and one for SSG on Jim. But, you only have to defend twice if you defend first in OT. It's a sw uh, side switch back and forth. There are three OT rounds, and defenders, yeah, they're going to go basement first, then they're going to go cash, and if the record persists, SSG will take this map handily. Watch G2 just absolutely yeah. come <laughs> yeah. through in the clutch and just pulverize SSG on yeah. the side, and then we're sitting here going, Huh? To go. Logic out the window, we don't need it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's one of the things that has always made uh, a good team great. Is the ability to break streaks like what we have right now, where both teams are just defense win, defense win, defense win. So, 
it would prove the greatness of G2 if they were able to win this right here and now. And we've seen crazier things, so uh, not going to be too unusual. It's a similar setup to what we had last time around from Space Station. You've got Rampy running impacts, so there's at least the prospect of stopping one of the possible hard destructive tools being applied to that kitchen hatch. No mute this time. Three hard breachers being brought out from G2. So you hit the panic button at this point. Yeah, I, I honestly think it's the right call. Three hard breachers, a soft destructor, and inside gadgets. The Thatcher will clear out the ADS along for the nade from Jonas. And uh, must have been caught by an ADS. Maybe another. Yeah. Fusion, though, on the face of Jonas as a second gets tossed in, and it looks like it got eaten as well. Yeah. Possible these... some possible some ADS juggling from Thinking Nade went on down there. I mean, that... I... Hmm. It actually looks like they might have gone off. We just might not have heard it. I'm not... Well, I don't see the explosive residue on the floor, so I, that was a really interesting... May, oh, you know what? Maybe it went through the rotation hole and there's an ADS in there as well. Who knows? Anything's possible, but the nades did not detonate as far as I could tell, and uh, that's not the result that G2 wanted out of that situation. Two EMPs and two grenades used for not. G2 have lost a lot of their valuable resources, especially on this site. There's a C4 that goes out from Space Station that nets almost nothing. Thinking Nade continuing on his hot trend. So the EMP goes off from Fabian, but Pengu falls. G2 will find themselves in a 4v5 moving forward with one set of their hard destructive tools gone and two decent weapons in the bearing as well as the Type 89. G2 are playing very close to blue, but an Echo will take down Jonas along for Rampy to get the kill. That's good coordination. By Church Wall, Goga's trying to go for the plant. Near window opened up, Fabian's going for the cover, and he will eliminate Bosco, who is trapped. Nothing he could have done in that situation. And he will be eliminated because of it. Yokai drone still in play. Redeemer has been so huge for SSG so far throughout this match, using those Yokais to great effect, and he's just juggling them. Fabian eliminates Thinking Aid, though, and G2 is in a good spot. There's very little time, though. And going for the defuse is Goga. There's a Yokai still there. Chala trying to make his way in through the rotate been so good earlier on, but there you go. Oh. Kanto, no, Kanto! You take down Chala, but you get Goga at the same time. And this could be a fatal mistake. As now Kanto has to go in for the plant, the second Yokai drone nowhere nearby. And Rampy, who was great last time on Castle, will need to go for a retake, but he gets cut down as Kanto's watching. There's still gonna be a Yokai drone for Redeemer to possibly give information. He's gonna get peaked, but G2 wins church. Michael, what did I say about this site? You called it. Massive victory. The first successful attacking round on this site. All game comes to put G2 on match point. So, the miracle of G2 winning that round, will it be matched by their opponents is now the real question. It's always nice to see BC, by the hey, way. BC. Hey, for Dark Zero, welcome. Won't be competing on the stage like last year. No. Unfortunate. But it's good to see him, Bob. Yeah. So that team kill from Kanto Kedi ultimately, I guess, <laughs> didn't really mean that much. Landing his shots apart from that. Oh, and actually, I suppose, including that. The you know, to all of this, by the way, is that Fabian is currently sitting on 16 kills. He, he has been fragging... Seven deaths. So much. Not just in the main event, but also the group stages. Fabian... I mean, Fabian had the most kills on his team outside of the group, uh, out of the group stages. Not the best KDR, but the most kills. And he's just... That's so weird, man. You don't expect it from him, of all people, but I suppose, I guess, he is the best player in the world. Let's just say this. Fabian never really lacks confidence. When you see some of the ways, <laughs> some of the ways that some of his other teammates have played this season in Pro League, it looks like there's been a lot of hesitation. Goga and Jonas, in particular, have lagged behind in their ability to land shots and play confidently. We saw it on a couple of the EU play days leading up to the Invitational, where the entry from those players seemed to be a little misguided and very shaky. That's very rare for G2, given the fact that they tend to be really cool under pressure and never let anything get. I think it was a bit of a hiccup. It was how people were treating that first half of the European Pro League, but it was a pretty large one. <laughs> that, they did not get a great record. However, that's not really what matters right now. So G2's defending Church downstairs again. Last time that we saw Space Station come here, what happened? A great degree of difficulty to be able to take control of Garage. 
Large part of that was both Pengu and Kanto's play. Kanto's aggressive on the main stairs, almost finds and nets a kill on T'Challa, which would be extremely detrimental to SSG. They are not running a triple hard breach setup. So if you lose your Thermite or your Habana, you essentially have to completely recalibrate your strategy because all of that hard destruction that you relied on is gone early before its utilization. So one of the exothermic charges from Space Station, speaking of, will be used on the server wall, which allows clear pas passage. And the rest of Space Station can begin to enter. G2 got very aggressive on the main stairs, but there's a call to retreat with a minute off of the clock. We'll head for the hills and hunker down inside the site. Time wasted, though, at the very least. It's one of the more passive roams we've seen from G2, especially on this site. We've often seen G er, G2 and Kanto specifically attempting to hold the top floor for an extended period, period as defending the bottom floor. It's an interesting strategy, um, and it's actually worked out for G2 a lot, but they're not committing to it this time. Possible that they were afraid of SSG cutting off the rotation and managing to cinch around. And when the pressure's so high, I don't really blame G2 for playing it safe. Especially considering Space Station and Gaming have not had a very quick attack here. I mean, we're down to the last minute. The drops are still being opened up. I mean, you don't need to play aggressively on this site. You can make it work, but you don't really need to get yeah, you don't a have. full court press, essentially, when you're attacking on Church. Teams are able to perfectly defend it, having a body inside of blue, a body inside of dirt, and the other three inside of the various sites. So I would imagine that it's going to be pretty par for the course for G2 to just sit along for the ride here. Possibly lose some Xkeros, a perfect impact trick from Kanto Rikai, oh. but Bosco goes for him. He gets Pengu instead. Kanto has been downed, and now Jonas under fire as well as Kanto, just trying to crawl away. See if he can get revived by one of his teammates, finished off by Bosco, a second kill for the Jackal, as SSG will begin their assault. It was only a couple minutes ago that not a single team had prevailed on attack. But this time, it looks like we might go two for two, especially if SSG continues on with where they're going. A third for Bosco as he takes out Jonas. Bosco silenced, Chala goes down, Goga gets traded off by Rampy, and Fabian inside of Dirt will have three bodies to find. Adding to his stats, he'll take out Rampy. Diffuser going down from Redeemer. Where are you, Fabian? Can you get the oh, no. in place? It gets shot at the last second! An incredible opportunity from Thinking Nade, and Fabian is trapped in Dirt. Look left, look right but you're not getting out of there alive. Thinking Nade propels us to the final round, 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, hey, young. That was an incredible clutch there from Thinking Nade specifically, starting with the Yokai drone. He managed to lock out Dirt Tunnel rotation as well, but that Yokai drone was absolutely perfectly shot. And it, I honestly expected us to see us end the map right after the Yokai started coming out of Dirt Tunnel. It's unfortunate for G2, of course, that we didn't go, or we didn't have a Yokai drone positioned inside of Arsenal from the get-go. But SSG, I mean, what a round. It all started with Bosco as well, just inside the kitchen, managing to get that early pick onto Pengu, who was just trying to protect his teammate of Kanta Riketi, who had been downed. Following that, there was not a whole lot of recovery from G2, and SSG saw their opportunity and picked up the pace. They did not relent for a second. Every single time someone from SSG was felled, another player would take his place and refrag, refrag, refrag. They kept that manpower advantage throughout the round. We have a tactical timeout here from G2, and I think <laughs> it's an appropriate timing considering they have no other opportunities besides now. I mean, you saved it up until this point. Why not go for it, right? Now, G2 has gone through the group stages and up to this point have not dropped a single map. This is the very first time that they are in a position where they could find themselves being punished for that. And Space Station not having a lead at any point in this match so far, but they're going to sit on match point for the very final round. They just they, keep bringing it back. They, and this is the inverse of Space Station Gaming. The team that ties every single time, the team that seems to fall apart in the matches where they have such a massive lead, they have been able to dig deep and find some kind of hidden land power to go from a 5-1 deficit to a 7-7. And we've seen two successful victories from the attackers on Church. And SSG is going to roll the die and really hope that that number doesn't become three. 
as they'll go back down to church for our final defense before we head to bank next. So I realize that we've just seen two successful basement attacks, and that might blunt this a little bit, but SSG again gets to defend the bottom floor because they were unsuccessful. So now the advantage that G2 earned by successfully attacking the bottom floor works against G2 in this round. And that is just, that has just got to hurt so much that you know because you were victorious, now it's going to be even more difficult for you to win the map as a whole. Winning the battle and potentially losing the war could be the story here for G2. So far during the invitation, only three maps have gone to full 15 rounds. I feel like Flynn casted every single one of those. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. Was it in the group stages? Probably. The day one, right? Yeah. Mm hmm. How do you want an exciting match that's back and forth? Give it to Flynn. Well, day, t day two on uh, Stream B was as well. Pretty long. Yes. Long days, but exciting matchups so far. And that's exactly, I mean, the correlation is pretty strong there. And unless this is, now there's some ambiguity with that stat. Is this the fourth map or is this the third map? We don't know. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's Absolutely. a good question. Yeah. Is this the third or the fourth? I expect to pop I, up at some point. I feel like Spike is accounting for both. I feel like it. Yeah. So. Anywho, G2 has taken a minute so far, and the Blitz gets pulled out. Our first shield operator between these two teams. It takes 14 rounds to get there, and in the 15th round, well, Pengu, who jokingly called himself a shield main for this team, will go off of a hard breacher before going the Ibana play. I mean, he is the player who brings a shield when no one else right. wants to bring the shield, so I, he kind of is. Oh, this Twitch drone from Fabian, it will be very effective at just sitting and waiting. Now keep in mind, Twitch drones make a lot less noise, and because of this, you can put it in positions where it might not be found. If you're not using it for tasing, it can be a pretty potent tool for recon, but there goes one of the drones, as we see just for a second a glimpse of Pengu, trying to push up through Dirt Tunnel, but he gets hit by a Yokai drone in the process, and concussed for the time being. What a start! Rampy tosses up a C4 and it connects, and it just looks like another day in the office for him. The Twitch drone's likely brought to eliminate the Yokai drones. You can't really be doing anything with IQ when you're going into the site, so this oh. is a good pick from Fabian, but oh no. Thinking Nate has somehow managed to make his way out of Oil Pit. What has happened? Why was the Claymore not on the ladder? Doesn't matter at this point, Fabian doesn't seem to be aware. And if Thinking Nate times his flank properly, he could win this round for his team. He's given his position away, and there comes Thinking Nate as Goga takes him out, but the refrag is a bit too late. 40 seconds to go. You've lost your buck and you've lost your twitch. That drone might still persist, but here's the bandit. As the shield will push up, Rampy's got his cover. And ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we've got liftoff with Kanto in a 4v1 with 30 seconds to go. Fighting from behind the entire map. Is there gonna be a miracle? There won't be. There's a shutdown and they're fired up. Space Station will take their map and we'll go on to bank. What a win from Space Station Gaming, defying the odds and breaking the monotony of that map. Very impressive to take Clubhouse. Getting to defend first really helped them there on that OT, but they still had to double down on the advantage by losing it early, their first defense not going their way, and they had to do exactly as G2 did, which was win an attack on the bottom floor, and they accomplished that. Well, that's a C4 right there that upon further inspection from Jonas will likely anger him as he looked well away from the blast radius, or at least on the very cusp of it. Probably shouldn't have taken him out, but hey, it did. Looked like he was pretty safe at that point. So, we'll take just a second here and we'll go towards map number two. Now, when you look at a map like Bank versus a map like Clubhouse, Bank is much larger. It's going to require a lot greater scrutiny of where your defenders are going to be playing. And your entry needs to be very strong. I mean, you don't need to look too far back, only to a couple hours ago, in the Fnatic Nora Rango matchup, where an inability to drone and an inability to coordinate with your teammates to flush out the offsite players is your undoing. And as the match goes on, they realize that your ability to run over your opponents and catch them off guard can work quite well. Now, ultimately, there's some room for improvement there from both Fnatic and Nora Rango. But G2 plays very unpredictably. And we can see that translate very well on bank, especially when you look upstairs at defending CEO or even Teller's Archives with a second floor hold. That CEO site has been so inconsistent as of late on bank. And it's one of the more popular sites that we see play it as well. The results are varied. We often see teams come from Skylight or Main Lobby. Those are the two primary attack strategies. And 
there's no consistency to the result at all. I mean, we'll see in the same match a team come from uh, main lobby attacking CEO three times in a row. Oh, win it the first time, lose it the second time, and win it the third time. And even after massive adjustments from the defensive team on CEO, it might not matter because there's only so many things you can really change on holding the top floor to account for how your enemy is attacking. Why? It's really a shallow site, and it's probably the most shallow site on all of Bank. Why is that? Well, because, yeah, the main lobby doesn't have, I mean, there's nothing there on the top floor. It's just openness. It's all things considered, you don't have a lot of ground to work with as a defensive player or defensive team on that site. It's similar in a way to Basement, but at the same time, Basement acts often more as a bunker, and all you have to do is just hunker down and wait often on that bottom floor. You're a lot less exposed, so it can be easier to just run a full anchor strat, bring out the utility, try to play smart. So we're just getting ready to set things up here, and this prolonged break always allows a coach to be able to talk to the teammates. Now, for those that are curious and might not be the most aware of how the rules work in regards to coaching policies, your coach can stand behind you and watch all of your monitors just fine. He cannot communicate, or they cannot communicate to you, unless it is in between maps, or it is during a technical or tactical timeout. So Lycan or Shaz can stand there behind the team, cannot communicate with the team until there is a break. Now, because we are between maps, both Shaz and Lycan, as you can see, we're getting in on the festivities, talking to their teammates. They have a headset as well, which they can communicate with. They are still dialed in. They are on the same server as all the players. So there's a major advantage as we wait to see when we load up onto bank here. So is it predominantly or is, is historically a very good map for G2. Now, there's not really any bad maps for G2, all things considered. They have one of the most robust map pools in all of Rainbow Six. They have had an immense amount of success on almost every single map at every site they play. That goes to the testament of their players and well as their coaching staff and their preparedness. But I think it's a bit of a surprise to a lot of people. We saw Space Station roll through Clubhouse. The only real damning thing to keep in mind is that that was an 8-7 victory on what is supposed to be your choice there. The fact that it was that close See Shades of the Fnatic Nora Rengo match. And I hate to bring it up again, but Nora Rengo barely eked out a victory on Fnatic's map and then just ran through Fnatic on their own pick. We could see G2 struggle on Clubhouse, fall just short of a similar circumstance on Bank. I think to an extent that also depends on G2 getting psyched out, and I honestly just don't expect it. I think about being a G2 player and listening to Shaz in the break, talking to me about all the mistakes I made in the previous match, and I mean, uh, he's... You know, honestly, listening to Shaz talk is very relaxing. I'm sure they're extremely focused right now. It's just because of his accent. It, you know, it might be the accent. It's so soothing. I don't know what it is, but yeah, Shaz is excessively soothing. It's weird. We're going on to bank now, and it's going to be map number two for this best of three series. SSG managing to just barely beat out G2 on map number one, as you stated earlier, eight to seven. Very impressive scoreline for the Americans. They're looking to do it again. This is the first map that's been dropped by G2 at this event. It comes at the hands of a team that has struggled in North American Pro League, and a lot of people didn't even predict would make it out of their group. Keep in mind, they were in that fabled group of death, though I think that term was used on three of the four groups, so I don't know how much weight it carries. Yeah. But in a group, a group with Immortals, Rogue, and Team Empire. A lot of people didn't have Space Station making it out, but boy did they, and they have done what no other team has been able to do up until this point which is, I guess, mar the record of G2. We'll go into the ban phase, and Space Station will be starting on defense first. This gives them the first and fourth bans. They're going to ban Monty and Valk, same as before, whereas it's going to be Jackal and Maestro from G2. The only difference in this particular ban phase is that it's a Jackal in place of a Yin. He has two. To what? He has a Troy and a Young. I think that's a to scale picture of Troy Canadian's head, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> He's somewhere in this venue right now and he hates you. He hates me no matter where he is. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, uh, so map number two, and we're starting to load in here. Bottom floor from SSG to start. Not surprising in the least. This plays out somewhat like Clubhouse, the map we just witnessed, Defenders not identical, of course, but it's similar. 
You're going to get the basement usually for most teams. First things first. Then you got two other sites that are viable or at least widely played. CEO and Tellers. Open area is technically also viable, but just not often played. Now, the utility lineup on SSG is also of interest. They have not brought an Echo. They've instead decided to bring a Mira, Mew with a C4, Pulse with a C4, and Gas Canister from the smoke. So they've got plenty of counterplant utility, and while an Echo is very useful here, I'm sure Space Station are expecting G2 to bring something to counter it directly. G2 actually tried to, it looked like they tried to do that in the last round of the uh, previous map by bringing a Twitch to shoot the Echo drones before pushing into the site, which is actually a pretty smart play, all things considered. It didn't work out for G2, but it's a smart play. So Space Station might have caught wind of that and decided, hey, you know what, we don't need Echo, we don't need Yokai's, we can make it work with something else. And hence the uh, operator lineup we have ourselves sitting on right now. He's got a game of cat and mouse uh, very early on, 30 seconds in, and thinking they're creeping on up. He's going to have two sites trained on him as both the Zofia and the Ash are just sitting and waiting to try and catch the mute. What's Rampy not using an ACOG upstairs on that CEO side of things over by Banana? Possibly taking an engagement on the bank windows. This is very dangerous, what he's doing. He won't fall back. Almost stupid, I would say. <laughs> that, is a, that is not a smart play, but there you go. So goes Rampy, and so goes Chala as well. I uh, did not see where Chala died, but as the Mira, it's kind of puzzling that he's the first one down, it looks like it's... Looks like it actually might have been downstairs, potentially? Could have been through a hatch, she just wasn't paying attention. No. Maybe, yeah. Keep in mind, we usually see one of the hard breachers get banned here on bank. Due to preference on the both Jackal and Monty bans, well, you have all three hard breachers available. This is going to make this site in particular very difficult to defend, or at least more difficult than usual. So, you've got all three of them being used by G2, and um. not really much of a surprise there. Sloppy play from Kanto as they just lose a drone for no real reason. It is, it is sloppy. I mean, he clearly wanted to clear out nothing, but yeah. Well, there was a barbed wire, but I mean, you I might... don't think there was actually. No, no, no residue there of barbed wire, unless it glitched out. But so yeah, weird. But uh, I mean, using a breaching round to take out your own drone, it really is an interesting play. Uh, yeah, I mean, we all make mistakes, Parker. It, it happens. Kendrick, Kendrick, Kendrick's nuts. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> exothermic charge on the server wall. A mute jammer to stop it. This could be just a few more seconds delayed here. You also get that eventually. Look at this. There you go. The only person that is even remotely close to the A bomb site is Redeemer inside of gold. The rest of the site is completely vacant. Thinking Nate is playing in the hallway. Rampy's in garage and Bosco is all the way in B. But Gogo will have to fall off the plant as Bosco will toss a toxic canister and Redeemer will just sit and wait so patiently. Bosco can thread the needle yet again and get the toxic canister down. So Fabian is upstairs along with Penguin. So three members of G2 just waiting. Uh -oh. There's Goga, he sprints right in, takes out Thinking Nate. This could get very hairy very quickly. Bosco eliminates one as a body falls and you're gonna get Redeemer to try and grab another C4, tosses out, but the ejected mirror was the other way. Two down bodies, Bosco collecting tickets. He gets Goga and Kanto Ricchetti as Jonas goes as well. Plant down, but Pengu's upstairs, and there's three members of Space Station that can begin to swarm him. The Diffuser is not in a position where Pengu can cover it through the hatch, so he's gonna have to move at some point. No counter diffuse timer yet, as the location of Pengu might not be available to Space Station. One body's gonna come in, Pengu gets one, not expecting the second dropped, and the first round will go to Space Station, as it's an easy diffuse. Rampy, a triumphant clutch, and they'll give him the disable as well. A celebratory dance from Bosco, why not? And Space Station, they grabbed the very first lead of this entire series. Space Station carrying all momentum at present. A very impressive retake there. You could see they were playing as safe as possible on the site. Maybe aware that there was potentially a Ying in play. Not the case here for G2, but the rush from G2 was countered by that passiveness from SSG. It was very well played and well, you gotta hand it to them. They just outfragged G2 in the retake. There were some uh, crucial moments there that actually could have made that round a lot easier for SSG. For example, the Thermite was planting in the open uh, next to a breach in the wall. But it doesn't matter because look at that double from Bosco. That's all that's required. The round went back in SSG's favor just off frags and frags alone.
Excellent retake. We're going to go to Teller's office archives for the second site. I wholeheartedly agree with this thought process. Teller's is statistically a superior site, but just less played than CEO. The meta is also slightly less developed, even though, yeah, it's bank. It's been around since the beginning. People play it less these days. CEO is the preference site. SSG is going to, at the very least, force G2 to change their strategy slightly. Something in North American Pro League that a lot of teams have noticed about Space Station prior to picking up Bosco on the roster, even back when they weren't even playing for Space Station, playing for another organization, was the ability for this core team of the Space Station roster to get back to site safely yeah. after killing a lot of time. Thinking Nade and Rampy were both in positions at the start of that round where an early engagement could have resulted in their deaths. Almost certainly would have for Thinking Nade. And Rampy very aggressively playing upstairs as the Jaeger by the top of the lobby stairs. That could have ended up blowing up in their face. But both of them were able to get back to site, and they were both huge parts of why that round went in favor of SSG. So, a little lesson there. You take a gamble on map control. Once you realize that you've got enough time burn off the clock, you don't necessarily need to provoke a site or a fight when you're playing on a site like CCTV downstairs or lockers, and you can comfortably fit everybody within the confines of all those walls. A bomb has been located. So, here in this round, only one anchor currently actually for SSG, and it's gonna get a rush from G2 because of that. No one inside of B from a space station, but Pulse, on oh, Bosco specifically, he's not calling this out. Where's the rotation from SSG? Cantor Kenny cuts it off, and it's gonna be a plant inside of Archives, a poorly established defense from Space Station, as no one was holding onto Archives throughout the round. Thinking Nade's gonna get Pengu, though, on the retake. Bosco using his pulse, and he'll get one himself! An excellent headshot through the wall. But they're running out of time. The diffuser going down and ticking away. G2 still has plenty of manpower in a position to hold this, but I don't think they have the angle. They probably don't. Goga's gonna need to get aggressive, but he'll be shut down! And oh no, the disabled denied! What a double for G2. One for Fabian, one for Jonas. From behind in small office, another one for Fabian. And Jonas in the main lobby is gonna put Rampy on the floor, but there's no time! It doesn't matter anymore. G2's gonna take it. An excellent rush into archives. That pull from the Zofia into the main lobby on the exact location of the diffuser is the only reason why that round doesn't go for SSG. Beautifully timed by G2, just to be able to move on in as it looked like the two GIGN operators camping on top of that diffuser were going to be able to get it. But Fabian's push on up was so well played and it ended up being Jonas right there. That saves you the round because you were down to a second on that disable time, and you almost had SSG grab that disable from right underneath your nose. Excellent play from G2. A good recovery from SSG, but just a little bit too short. And once again, it's very similar to the very first round. Space Station had minimal bodies playing on site. Same thing happened. But the difference is, is that on a site like CCTV and lockers downstairs, there's a lot of map that you gotta control before you can get on in. There's a rhythm to it. And with this site on Tellers, when there's nobody seated there and there's no presence on that second floor, you, that whole site is yours for the taking and that's what G2 did, they took it. They got that diffuser down in a position where they could reliably watch it. I mean, remember Fnatic Nora earlier in the day? We saw a Tellers attack from Fnatic where Nora were set up above. They had impact holes to cover archives. And as Fnatic tried to rush into archives, which was empty, they were mowed down one after another. Could you imagine if SSG had established themselves in a similar way? You probably would have seen a very different result. But a miss opportunity from Space Station. And uh, not the greatest setup initially into the round. G2 will always take those opportunities when presented. Now, going back to Tellers. And I think it makes a lot of sense. Because if we're being honest, SSG were very close to winning that last one. Despite not being able to deny the plant in Archives. This time around, Bosco will be playing Archives, nice and snug and ready to go. But he's also, again, the only anchor. And this is just a bit of, again, it's, it's a gamble from Space Station. They're relying on the retake potential, and I, I believe that's a good call, knowing Space Station, but why not two anchors? Why not one for each site? It's questionable. There you go, you got Bosco nestled up in B now with Chala not too far away with a rotate if needed. There's a yokai drone in open area that you can just sit and have it watch for you. 
as Jonas will drone it out and wait to see if map control can go for G2. Chala takes out the drone and then just retreats. Rampy's gonna be in the very first encounter. Oh. He gets Kanto, picks himself back up, but Pengu is right there. And it'll be a good trade. Take out the Ash for the dock. Well, it's pretty even as all things can be considered. Take out one of the best players on G2. You take out one of the best players on Space Station. Fabian walks right in, gets a freebie off of Thinking Nade, as I don't think the Rook was anticipating that much of a push. But he should have heard the door break, and he absolutely should have heard a Cam go as well. Possibly thinking that he could win an engagement, but the three speed of Fabian was just too quick for him. That means that control on that second floor is fully G2s with 90 seconds into the round. Pretty good timing, all things considered. Yeah, losing Cantor Getty is harsh, but overall, Space Station are in a great spot right now. And Fabian, again, has been fragging nonstop, it feels like, through this tournament. So the fragging power on G2 is certainly not limited in the least. Chala playing just inside of Tellers, and he's the only one holding this position. Redeemer's got himself set up inside open area, and Bosco in archives. Vertical pressure here from G2. Those are the breaching charges coming out from Giannis in all likelihood. It's very good to establish that rotation cutoff between A and B. Bosco's gonna go for a run out, as will Chala, who challenges on Togoga. These aggressive plays from Space Station are almost working out. Bosco gets shut down on the flank, expect it. Charles going for a second, but he misses some crucial shots. It's unfortunate to see, but it does happen. Jonas doesn't lose those at all. Even though he did take a bit of damage, Fabian grabs Shala, Pengu falls off the defuse for the time being. Redeemer's got 20 seconds. But where's the yokai? Sophia will present herself and Redeemer will shut him down, but that might be an impactless frag as now Diffuser goes down and Redeemer will need to wade his way through the site. So there's a rotate hole for him to work with as Pengu's gonna sit and camp it. The proud mother of a Diffuser sitting just a couple feet away from him. Fabian moves on over towards the teller's desk. Redeemer will put in a yokai drone. We'll see Pengu gets promptly shut down. Pengu rotates and Redeemer and Pengu will be in a standoff. Gumain will hit. Fabian there taking damage, but Pengu prone. Easy clutch. G2 will take the lead for the first time on bank. And Teller's Archives, not looking so strong for Space Station. Certainly not like their CCTV defense downstairs. Good news, they can go back as it's unlocked at the conclusion of this round. Suppose I spoke too soon for this particular match. It seems as though G2 has Teller's on lock when it comes to that attack in Space Station. I mean, yeah, okay, Rambi hit the shot on the decanter Getty there, and it was very impressive. But why is he positioned in the main lobby is the real question. Giving himself away there, unfortunate. This is really great patience from Giannis holding that angle, expecting the flank. It must have been a call from a drone to make that happen. Overall, the attack from G2 was very well set up. They managed to take top floor control, use the vertical pressure, was breaching charges to cut off rotation between sites. The roamers by open area were effectively useless as G2 didn't need to clear open area in order to take that site. And it's gonna be rotation from SSG. They will go to CEO. The tricky thing is that this is not necessarily an easier site to defend than Tellers. This is honestly on about the same level. And it, if G2 plays the way they were playing in those previous two rounds, we might see a similar result. G2 managed to put themselves up 3-2, or 3-1, pardon me, here, then it's going to be very difficult for Space Station to bring it back at this point. It's also really, I don't know, I guess surprising that we're gonna see Space Station go CEO when they could go basement. I'm very curious as to why you go up to CEO when you have CCTV available. Yeah, I don't know. It worked. It worked really it worked. well. It, it worked really well, all things. It did. When you really think about it. But all right, I guess you go for you go for a CEO. You know, one thing that's really curious is we have both Ying and Glass in play here, and we have yet to see either of them. When you mean in play? You mean unbanned? Yeah. Yes. Not being banned is that's the curious part, isn't it? They're so often banned, and when okay, not, usually the they get played, especially on maps like Bank. Yeah. I believe Glass would be extremely useful on pretty much all of these sites. A lot of teams ban Glass here, especially against opponents that run Glass an awful lot. I feel like there were days when Jonas used to run the Glass quite a bit, but he's been on Zofia duty for the most part of the day. Obviously favoring the utility that she brings and the overall kit that she has as well. One minute in play, and G2 has been able to smash a couple windows open, but outside of drone work, really hasn't been that much that's happened between these teams. Fabian will enter as Jonas drones in through the garage. Fabian realizing he has a pretty clear path on up. 
One thing that G2's been really good on for those two rounds on Teller's Archives was finding the holes that were presented from Space Station's defense, and then just piercing, realizing that you can walk right in, very similar to the way that Team Liquid does it. You figure out that there's a path on in, a path of least resistance, and you take it, get the plant down, and you have the control that you want. G2 know that they need to play this smart, but they're going to be coming in from the main lobby, and Thinking Aid is there to receive them. He says there's no rooms available, but he'll run back as G2 sets up a fit. It's like when you go to the bank and they say, sorry, we're close for lunch. And uh, the, the guns come out, and we have an entry straight on into Taylor's. That was a pretty successful entry, all things considered. They really should end by they. G2, oh! oh <laughs> he just goes for it, and he gets it easy. No! No! How do you what do is that? happening? And it's getting even worse as Chala takes down Cantoriketti. Fabian will get the first kill for his team, but it's a lockout for SSG. That CEO tank was over before it even started. The first kill happens and all the dominoes fell. What a play and what a chance from thinking they to vault out the window of the site. This roars through Pengu and I feel like before Habana's body even hit the ground, everybody else was dead too. Yeah, it did feel that way, yeah. I, I really want to know why Yonas shot his teammate. I have to see that. Oh, there it is. That's it, looks some... like, it looks like Yoga or Coco yeah. was kind of, or, or Yoga. He looks like he does it. Well, okay, it wasn't, it wasn't Jonas' fault. It, it's it what we just confirmed. It looked like he just hit him in the shoulder ever so slightly. Yeah, and it was it was really poor communication, sure, but I, you can't blame Jonas for that one. Reacting Defender, to an opponent and someone steps in front of him. Top fragging on his team again through four rounds. Seven kills for Fabian. He is willing his team to stay in this one no matter what. When he said he was the best player in the world, I think he thought that people didn't take him seriously, and he's trying to prove it now. At least that's the way this is coming off. I think that really speaks more, though, to the rest of his team. Yeah, they are providing a lot of great support for him. With, but they shouldn't be, that's the thing. Fabian doesn't play a role where he's their entry fragment. That's Kanto's job. I, and then you've got Jonas following up, Fabian's your flex. I don't yeah, think, like, if I'm being honest with you, Parker, I don't think Fabian secure. is being put in a position where he's destined to, to get kills. I don't think that's what G2 are setting up for. I think he's just taking the opportuni opportunities that are presented to him. I think he's just having a really good tournament. So you're saying he's baiting his teammates? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying, Parker. Understood. That's 100% what I was saying. No, I think what's happening is that the entry so far of G2 has been kind of disjointed. This is the story of European Pro League. Sometimes it just feels like the entry of G2 is very sloppy. It doesn't feel like it's very well connected. And Fabian is there just to rely on his own sense and what little is left of his team after one or two might go down. Mm. And yeah, I mean, you get seven kills. They might be impactless if you're not winning the rounds. But I mean, right now it's a 2-2 scoreline. So clearly those contributions uh -oh. have been very important. Oh, he can do oh, it. No. Bosco, run, run, Bosco, run. You're under surveillance. Chala takes out Kanto Ricchetti. There's one of the entries of G2 eliminated. As off of his sensor, Bosco will go, which will negate Fabian's ability. You find the pulse playing underneath. Good control on that second floor, though, from G2. You can see why he didn't go for the shot on the pulse there. He was trying to bait out the C4. That's a smart play from Fabian. Yoko, you drone here from Redeemer. It's going to be trying to uh, disorient just a little bit, delay as much as possible. C4 being wasted from Pulse means that uh, it's pretty safe for G2 to play on the top floor. They're gonna just need to cut off the rotations. Bosco's looking for one. Here goes the hatch over top of bomb site A. And need to remind you that we oh. are currently defending open area, or playing on open area rather. And Fabian's going over towards that site now. Skylight is he'll toss out a drone. Two kills from G2 as Fabian opens the affair along with Jonas. Not too far behind. Put some pressure on the Jonas on those stairs as there's Rampy prone looking to possibly pick one member of G2 off. Doesn't get it though. These Yokai drones are going to be so important going into the dying seconds of this round, especially considering the way that open area plays as a site. These long angles are hard to manage, and G2 has direct access to the site. Doesn't seem like the defenders really can stop this entry, nor 
May they be able to stop the plant? It's going down. Where's the Yokai drone? It's not happening. Redeemer just not aware of the situation or repositioning the Yokai drones poorly, but it might not matter as Space Station get two frags in their favor. The Onus is on low HP. Pengu just hit a goo trap and is called out inside a printer. Jonas is also going to shut down Thinking A before he dies, and another one for him on such low HP. This is incredibly impressive. Playing on top of that diffuser, he is just one bullet away from death, but now he has the support of Pengu. Just going to be holding down this rotation. Oh, Redeemer, no, he just doesn't pull the trigger. Pengu will cut it off, and G2 take the round. That was a perfectly timed lifeline that was shot in towards the staff area and completely baffled Space Station. And it provided enough cover from both sound and visually for G2 to drop the dual drop while Pengu watched from over towards Printer in open area. And Space Station had no clue they had lost control of the site. I also think that the Yokai drone came out of open area earlier and went straight into the kitchen. I'm not sure what the thought process was behind that for Redeemer, but it might still have been one inside of open area. But I don't think so. If there had been one in open area, you can bet your bottom dollar that one of the dead players on SSG would have been calling out, oh, hey, guys, they're planting deep open in default spot. But that call never came. And so the Yokai drones were never used to deny the plant. And so the push from SSG came in the post plant yet again. We've seen this a lot. G2 have put themselves in the advantageous position multiple times because Space Station are either unaware of the plant going down or unable to react to the plant going down until it is finally on the floor. Looks like it's going to be a holding server based solely on that flash pick. Once again, this is really bizarre. So you win on CCTV as Space Station. You lose Tellers twice. You go to CEO when CCTV is available. In fact, every site is available at that point. Yeah. It's all right, you go upstairs, you go to CCTV. You win. You now can go back to CCTV, Tellers, or open. Then you go to open. It's a good, uh, I don't know, that whole rigmarole and that whole game of, what is it? Game of sites? I guess like game of chance? It's almost like a guessing game. Well, I mean, partially it's a guessing game, I suppose, but I think, I don't know. I, I think that the basement should have just been the, the pick straight is up as soon as they had it. There's nothing else to say. SSG almost salvaged the round, given the fact that we saw G2 drop through that hatch, completely unbeknownst to the rest of the defense. Had Redeemer been eyes on that hatch with the Yokai drone, or just had a body been somewhat nearby, then G2's plant probably wouldn't have been able to go down the way it did. But we'll transition in towards the final round of defense here. And <laughs> thinking Nate, this is still as a sentinel with lots of ADSs. Rampy will come in for cover watching the doorway. You'll see the Ash push on in. This is a big gamble. Oh no, and it doesn't look like Space Station will be able to get the best of G2. Played so effectively as Jonas and Kanto pick up two to start with. And all of the cover for Thinking Nade goes by the wayside. What a push from G2 to establish control of those server stairs and leave Space Station with just two bodies, with a minute and 40 left on that clock. Yeah, you've got an Echo, and yes, you've still got the plant denial of a C4 with a Mira. This, this is not good, especially when those Candelas go out. Chala ducks for cover. Fabian has control from the hatches above. Trying to use both those black Miras. We've got Redeemer and Chala, but Jonas will shut down Chala. And where, oh my, where is Redeemer? Well, he's under pressure, and Garage a flawless round. G2, read that one. Perfectly. And they'll go up 4-2 on attack on bank. You emerge with a 4-2 lead. That is worrisome for Space Station's fans as SSG will now transfer over to attack on a map that the defense ought to be winning more often than not. Map number three, Parker? I would say as, as of right now, absolutely. That round really came down to G2 not having any fear at all when pushing into the clash. And I honestly, rightfully so. They went for a wide peek, disoriented the clash, and knew that the Jaeger playing behind was probably going to be peeking to the right. He was indeed easy kill for the attacking team since the Jaeger was also disoriented. Following that, it was a pretty easy clear down into the server. Again, using those lifelines on the clash over and over again until she was no more. It's gonna be a basement defense here from G2. 
nothing changes. There is a Vigil being brought and an Alibi, though, so you can expect to see a pretty heavy roam from G2 in this round, at least. Likely to have some rotations back pretty quickly. We usually see this from G2. They'll just put the feelers out and wait for some prompting to either fall back or take a fight, depending on the situation and whether or not G2 has the advantage in that fight. Bosco and Dokkabi okay, is pretty interesting. Here we go. On bank, 42% of all kills have happened after the plant has gone down. Wow, that is Five a really interesting go. statistic. That's pretty crazy, actually. A very post-plant heavy set of circumstances. Yeah. E2 were able to get three diffusers down. They won every single round that did it. They also got the diffuser down, I believe it was on CCTV in the very first round. So four rounds with that diffuser down. They won three, they lost one, so. Well done. Defender is approaching. Pangu is going to be holding on to server, using Pulse to gather information. Nobody there from space station side, though. There's actually only one person on the, in the basement right now. That's Pangu. One or one defender in the basement. You've got Fabian inside a garage, but there's one. I, I mean, there's actually nobody on site at all. I mean, they're playing to hold the site by holding the entrances to the site. So there's no way for Space Station really to make this happen. Especially not after Rampy gets a C4 to the face from Pengu at the top of server stairs. Good start there for the Pulse. I think he also got echoed at the same time. That's just a Oof. really, that might just be a really bad one to two seconds. Mm. Put you out of your misery there. I like that we saw Jonas late reinforcing a hatch in open area. A couple teams have done this and the idea behind the mental gamesmanship is that if you leave hatches open and you can go for a late reinforcement, it leads people to think that, hey, this might be open. Phone call comes out from Bosco, but he's shut down by one of the alibis. There's four of them. And Kanto Ricchetti comes to life and manages to take him down. Though Kanto is found out, Chala doesn't need to worry too much on the guessing game. The Ibana able to slay the squid of Kanto Ricchetti. A minute 30 to go as logic bombs will still ring off. Penguins below the hatch as Redeemer will pop it open with an exothermic charge and go on to drone. Plenty of time for Space Station to still be able to figure out where to go, but this advantage is definitely in favor of G2 at the moment. I'm just gonna start opening up those drop downs, looking for some kind of access. They will have server in their hands, actually. G2 have given up on it. Pengu fell back to the vault. That's certainly the right call. You can now call out and we can play the default game, but G2 have come out on top thanks to their abnormal roam game. And because of that, SSG are going to be up against the wall when they go for the actual push into A. It's a plant, though, and no yokai thrown to be seen. No C4s. There it is. The C4 from Goga. But perfect dodge from Redeemer will allow for the planter to stay alive, and it's another attempt. But Goga goes for a rush, and Thinking Nade gets shut down. Redeemer refrags in Chala as well. Eliminates one of the owners, roamers. Another for Chala from above, using that drop down to great effect, and it's just Fabian. He has the Yokai drone still, yes, but it's in a one versus two. He knows he needs to get control above, and he's gonna see the head and land the shot. Now there's no way for the attacker to plant, and he has to go for a direct challenge. He's gonna instead force his way into B. He could still get this plant down, but the Yokai drone is probably gonna have something else to say about that. Is it's coming up on him right now? Only three seconds left, and it might be bad timing for Fabian, but it also might be the clutch, as now Redeemer is stuck in the plant, and he's gonna get eliminated. What a clutch from Fabian. The Yokai drone was hot on pursuit, on hot on the heels of Redeemer, and it was such a tough position for Space Station to find themselves in. And man, a coordination from G2. First and foremost, the Yokai drone from Fabian as Fabian is nestled very safely in the garage, playing by the armored carrier. What does he do? He sends the Yokai drone in right as the plan is going down. There's a C4 that gets tossed, and Goga gets this information immediately from one of the Yokai drones playing not too far off. That call from Gogo ends up being a wise one. And despite hatch control from Chala, Fabian's position was never given away. Maybe it was a lack of drones, maybe it was just a lack of coordination. But ultimately, Fabian, as that lumbering three armor, manages to somehow sneak his way across one of the largest maps in this entire game and 
pull off a miraculous clutch. So I want to talk about the defensive setup there from G2 because there were a lot of different uh, interesting things that they did in that last round. They had Kanter Riketti holding down the main lobby, drop down the elevator drop down using Alibi, which is a great operator, I think, to solo hold a location like that. That's one of the points of access to the bottom floor. There was Goga on the main stairs. That's another one of the points of access. Pengu using Pulse to not only hold the server stairs, but also the dirt tunnel. He can call out both of them as a Pulse. And then we also saw inside of Garage, Fabian on the Echo, and he's probably the perfect operator to hold that. So the setup from G2 in that round had zero people on the site for the first two minutes of the round, but they had every point of access covered. And as soon as anybody fell off one of those points of access, as soon as Cantor Kitty died in the main lobby, everybody else from G2 just fell back. They made the right call, they played it smart, we don't have full control of all of the access points, so we're going to hold downstairs. But that was just a really interesting defense from G2, and it's in the past. It did work for them. Now Space Station will have to attack in the present on CEO. The one good thing for Space Station is that what G2 appears to be doing with their setup, especially by having Kanto play the reinforced walls at the top of Spiral Stairs as the Echo, has been seen in Pro League a number of times. It's been seen in events a number of times. You know that Kanto is going to aggressively peak that. He's going to set up his Yokai drones, as we see right now, as essential scouting tools. They might aid him, they might aid his teammates. You don't really know exactly how they're going to make calls around it, as we are not privy to the information that they pass along to one another. That'd be cool. But what we do know, I mean, it would be great, but what, I, what we do know is that Kanto uses that ACOG to full effect, that long range that is provided through all of lobby and up towards the windows. SSG knows this and can prepare for it. And in fact, most of SSG appear to be heading on over to the windows, up on repel towards the site, foregoing any potential conflict with Kanto inside of the main lobby. Bosco waiting for his opportunity, likely also waiting for a drone, but oh no, Jonas is ready for this. He's gonna adjust ever so slightly. Shotgun out, he must have heard that nade, and oh, he's not gonna dodge, but the cooking is just too long. And uh, that cake will not taste very good. Bosco still on repel, still trying to apply pressure, still trying to deny the impact tricking. This is going to work out well. Redeemer gets the exothermic charge off, and that's a good amount of control inside of CEO. And he's trying to go through some shots through that reinforced, well, not reinforced shelf, and the bullets will go through, but they will not land. I'm waiting to see if somebody from G2 is going to get the call to pressure lobby and maybe go for one of these bodies from Space Station who will be vulnerable on repel. Frustrating for Bosco as he's going to waste about five seconds. Fabian starts things off inside of trading, and there will be no trade as it's a sole kill on to Rampy. His Redeemer very, very close. Join effort as the call is made to Bosco on repel to just dispatch Jonas. Looks like some more damage there from Kanto Ricchetti. It's going to eat up both Redeemer and Chum. Um. I don't know what's going on there, but thinking Nade will finally finish off Fabian. These mute jammers being essentially the end of this hard destruction. Pengu takes out Redeemer, dives through the window and off the top ropes, picks up a double kill as he'll head for the hills. But it will set Space Station up with two bodies, able to pressure the site with Kanto and Goga still there. Pengu is very low on HP, but the timer will be the undoing. It's gonna have to be a double repel on in, almost certainly to their doom as their positions will be translated very well. And Kanto and Gogo respond perfectly. G2 will go to match point on a much better map for this team. And we saw on Clubhouse everything going according to plan for the European and defending world champions. Pengu saying in chat, Fabian got promoted to Doc. <laughs> he did indeed. And it worked pretty well for him. It worked well for G2. And we're going to see a tactical timeout here. This is appropriate timing as well for just that, as well, you're on match point for map number two. And you got to find a way to bring this back. And of course, yes, again, it is SSG's tactical timeout. G2 were very aggressive in that round. They just took the fight to the enemy and, well, they won all of the fights. There's not really much else to say. SSG were spread pretty thin. There was a lot of potential for refrags, but almost no capitalization on those refrags. I mean, the biggest one, the, the glaring issue, of course, Bosco missing that shot on the castle running out. He went back to sewer. That should have been a refrag, and it just wasn't. Pengu managed to make it away from that situation pretty easily and even get back into the site to potentially influence the round moving forward if he had needed to. 
but it wasn't necessary. Round was over at that point. Once Pegu got that 2K and headed for the hills, well, he was gone. They didn't really need him, right? Yep, yep. And then the biggest thing was just that you got 10 seconds left. And what do you got to do? You had a double repel on him, basically doomed at that point. You are so vulnerable for those few seconds when you have to try to make it through a window. And well, it didn't really last very long for Space Station. But more so than that for SSG, it was a lack of proper coverage of where G2 could approach you from. There's nobody watching the trading room where Fabian had set up. And he had control over that doorway into the skyline. We've seen a lot of situations where a player will, on defense, push into trading room or stock room. And once they have control of that, they have an excellent crossfire, not only onto the CEO site, but also onto the entire balcony, which is usually a pretty substantial platform for the attackers to attack into to the square skylight. I mean, we, we did see it. I reference the game a lot, but we saw it in the Fanatic Nora match as well. So it's, it's, not, it's not too crazy to see somebody, uh, especially a defender with an ACOG, push into that trading room and get so much control from it. It's on the attacking team to lock off that flank. And that's, uh, well, certainly a mistake that needs to be corrected moving forward. Both of these teams are very formidable on Villa. We have seen more of a winning record towards G2's side than we have necessarily seen on SSG's side. Both teams have had their share of struggles. It was Secret who absolutely pulverized G2 and ran roughshod over them on Villa, just as EG was able to best Space Station on Villa. Both of these occurring within the last month and a half. So both of these teams have shown some weakness on this map, but ultimately, it's not bad for either. This is also not a bad map for Space Station, but so far, G2 have looked unbeatable on a lot of these takes. Yeah, G2 are really fired up after that last map loss. And uh, what you would imagine to be a negative effect on you is actually turning out to be quite positive for G2, as they are now focused and alert and just winning all of the fights that they take. Will that be changed, though? Nicky Nade trying to challenge John Tunis, and oof. Very narrow shots being missed by both players on this pixel angle. You know, this is actually going to be the one to take the first little bit of damage. Exothermic charge goes off, meanwhile, on the CEO wall, and that's a good job to SSG managing to get that control. Some drone work that could have really enabled Thinking Nade to jump on that kill onto Goga, but lets him get away. Redeemer had sustained a little bit of damage earlier on. He isn't really in much conflict for the time being. Might be the second set of logic bombs, unless somebody on G2 just hasn't bothered to squelch their phone here. This is has control of the windows. But they are struggling so hard, and they will get almost nowhere as Jonas gets thinking nade, and it's a double up for G2. Diffuser falls, but Rampy refrags onto Pengu. Goga is there, and G2 have read into this so well. Let's get really aggressive. That's tempting it might be for both Bosco and Rampy, who are in sight, but neither of them have the diffuser, so they have to go up top. This is going to be almost certainly a suicide mission unless they could just rely on raw fragment potential. Now, the information for G2 is that they know that they have the diffuser. There's still Yokai drones in play as well, and G2 is just waiting to circle on in and put us away towards our tiebreaker map. But Rampy looks almost surprised. Jonas is down as well. It's now a 2v2 as Bosco will finish him off. Rampy takes out Kanto Ricketti. And there's still some life in Space Station, but they have 15 seconds to challenge Goga for that diffuser. We'll have the Vector out, holding the double doors, waiting to see if someone's gonna push it. You're running out of time, Space Station. If you wanna go, you gotta hurry. Goga takes out Rampy. Bosco's gonna have to go in! What a shot from Bosco through the wall! And Space Station will hang on for the time being still sitting on match point for G2, and by the skin of their teeth, with just a couple seconds on the clock, Space Station managed to persevere. It does not get nuttier than that. Shot through the wall, that call must have been so precise. Just by couch, through the wall, easy kill, Bosco landed it, and because of that, SSG went around, there is no world they should have any right winning it in. I cannot believe that they managed to pull that off. Exceptionally impressive for Bosco and Rampy to clutch it out. Now, it's gonna be a bottom floor defense from G2. And I gotta be honest with you, Parker, 
the way that Bank has been playing out, despite that clutch from SSG, it seems like G2 are still in full control. I mean, they're on match point right now. They just need that one extra to push it over the edge. The bottom floor defense from G2 last time was so very dominant, you gotta expect it to be so again. It was dominant until it fell apart, and then Fabian clutched, though. I mean, you, can you count on a 1v2 clutch the same way I saw from Fabian again? I don't, I don't know if you can. I think you could attribute that more to, again, more miracles from SSG. The way that G2 set up their defense was very, very smart. And it worked well for them. They delayed for a lot. They managed to get some frags out of it. They gave away too many frags. True. But it was, I think, SSG more on the clutch path and Fabian managing to win it in the end. It was certainly... G2's round to lose, that SSG managed to start to try and bring in their favor. But no, I, I think I think you can reliably say that this should be a G2 round. And here's another thing, there's no alibi, which means it's very likely we're not going to see the same setup from G2. Possibly, that will give us a different result overall. That might actually be in Space Station's favor as well, keep in mind. All things considered, Kanto off of the alibi makes a lot of sense if they're trying to find some way to enable greater contribution to this team because Kanto is lagging behind the rest of the team right now in terms of what he does, which for somebody all needs to get kills. He's going to start off pretty well. Takes out Thinking Man and his goo mine above will also alert him to one member of Space Station up top of Skylight Stairwell. That's Rampy. The R4C could potentially be the undoing of these members as, oh man, Kanto gets away. Very low on HP, but Rampy can't capitalize. Both Pengu and Jonas are downstairs to give any kind of support that is needed. There's a potential for a C4 as Jonas on the rope takes out Chala. And hey, here we go, G2 trying to put this one away in a hurry. Maybe pushing his way into Archives. There is plenty of defense here and it's Kanthi Riketti to get his second for this round. Space Station Gaming. Really up in a bad spot. Goga's gonna shut down Redeemer. It's just Bosco, the last hope for a 2-0 series in Space Station's favor. Cantor Ketty's gonna take even more damage, but it's probably not gonna matter. Pengu, the only other player on the defense to have any damage on his way. Legion Trap will detonate. Oh, but it's a bad push from Eunice, giving an opportunity to Bosco to potentially clutch this out. He's got a good gun and set for this push, and he's gonna actually come up behind Kanturiketti! A second for Bosco, and he's going for it. At this point, G2 has to get wise to the situation and play it safe. There's no way they push into Bosco in this situation. Diffuser is also down upstairs, and it was noted that Bosco got an ace in the group stages. It's the first time and only time that he's gotten one on land. He's gonna have to get another. And he's also going to have to grab that Diffuser if he just doesn't want to frag out. He still has two smoke grenades available, but his utility is all gone, given that the Logic Bomb is sitting at zero. So, unless he, doesn't have a dr unless he has a drone available to him, he's going to be flying blind for this entire 30 seconds. Goes on a drone, realizes that there's no point bothering to bring it on up, and server stairs is where he'll start. Heading on down, he has a drone in his back pocket, but he's got two reinforced walls and a small doorway to go through. Doesn't know at all if there's somebody playing in server, doesn't have time to go on drones. 15 seconds. And he's going to be felled by the clock. A couple bodies in a mirror window will stand in his way. Bosco coming on in. There's a push. He'll grab one, but pushed off by Pengu. And there you have it. Bosco so close. Oh, he's teasing the audience. But G2, what a masterful performance after a disappointing clubhouse. They come one round away from taking the series 2-0. But because of that, because of Space Station, we'll go to map number three on Villa between these two teams. G2 having one core principle to that map, or so it seemed, aggression, aggression, aggression. Take the fights, and that's all they seem to really care about. It was an utterly commanding and dominating performance on Bank. And like I said about Villa, we've seen both of these teams play Villa before. And as I'm sure our desk in just a couple moments will be able to help us out here, Villa is probably going to be a matchup that is a lot more even than we anticipate. But we don't need to speculate, Michael, because the desk is ready and we'll gracefully hand it off to Milos and our dedicated analysts to go through what we've seen so far between these two teams. Thank you very much, Parker. One might call you a ballerina with how graceful you are. But, ladies and gentlemen, we're back at the desk. What an explosive series so far, gentlemen. I have to say, every single game is kind of living up to the dream. And Let's talk, about, uh, let's talk about map number one, clubhouse between these two. 
it gets very much in G2's hands, slips away, goes to SSG, then goes to overtime. And my god, what a heart-wrenching overtime it was in that first map. Alex, please. There was just so many clutches coming from both teams, uh, like Echo Drones in particular. The, the one second one uh, where Fabian just barely manages to stop it, but get, get his, his Echo Drone shot. Redeemer and Rampy's clutch in, in church when they, they played a 2v3. It, it, was, it was ridiculous to see how good SSG are doing right now, but then going into bank, it got a bit tougher for them, right? No, but they really have refused to give up. Even through the, the last moments, Bosco having a strong performance, and I think that was really what assisted them, that kind of de persistence and determination that allowed them to get the win on the first map. They were down 5-1. Yeah. They would come and they, they get five rounds on defense of their own, push it to overtime, and, and they stuck the overtime all the way through to the 15th round. Even at uh, on bank 6-2, making it to 6-3 with a, a 2v4 clutch, probably at least the clutch of this event, maybe if not the year. It, it, that, was, that was crazy. It was pretty darn good, to say the least. Definitely does keep giving us so many gifts, six invitational so far, but let's start from the top. We talked about the maps, let's talk about the operator pans. G2 started off on Clubhouse, banning Ying and Maestro. On the other side was Space Station, it was Monty and Valkyrie. How did that play in, in your mind? We only saw Blitz played once, I think, from, uh, from Pengu, but yeah, it didn't really have, really didn't really have any, any effect on Clubhouse, right? And they stuck with the Monty ban either way. So I, I don't think they should be too afraid of that as long as Echo's left in, but it seems to work for them, and apparently they're not afraid of a Blitz either, right? With, from, with your opinion, though, to focus more on, on Maestro for just a second, because you mentioned Redeemer for just a second. Can we talk about his, his Maestro usually, just to put things into perspective for everyone watching at home, then explain why that ban would come out? Well, so he's one of the few guys that always takes the right route with an Ekadron, never gets stuck. He always knows exactly how to get it there and how quick to get it. And even when we compare, you know, other top players with, with Echo, they just don't seem to be as quick with rotating their drones. And it's, I, I, in all fairness, he missed quite a few on Clubhouse, to be honest, uh, where he just wasn't there in time, or G2 was good with Sophia Lifelines to, you know, push him off for a little bit. But his Echo play is just, it's difficult for anyone to rival. Yeah, it's yeah. very difficult to hunt down a player like that, especially when you give it the combination of Thinking Nate, Bosco, and Rampy at the same time that have been putting things up and a lot of time we kind of neglect mentioning Chala and to a fault because when everything's functioning for the team it's because Chala is doing his work on the support play in the back droning in making sure that the walls are open and they're droned all the way inside the drone play from Space Station specifically on Clubhouse allowed them to play against a map that is so defender favored the most defender favored map in the pool so far yeah, and I mean, Clubhouse, especially for G2, playing into their map bands, uh, sorry, their operator bands, as you were saying earlier, and particularly getting rid of that, uh, uh, the Jackal for G2, it was clearly a target band, because as we saw when they flipped onto their defensive side, that <laughs> persisting roam was so very effective right down to the last round. Impressive kills from Kanto, and even some late flanks from Gogo. You know, a player who's not afraid to grab a one-speed operator such as Mira, put his utility on side, and as needed, go flank upstairs, throw out a C4 in the wall just so we can get a flank through uh, into CEO. These kinds of plays, it just shows the way that G2 are always prepared to, um, you know, within the blink of an eye, change what they're doing and make the next best decision based on a call of a, one of their players. Yeah, and we saw that in Bank, you know, mentioned Rome play, we saw the Vigil play, you mentioned the Mira play as well, but even Fabian playing in Echo, excellent Echo, rivaling that of Redeemer. There's a lot of skill being put on show here between both of the teams and on very specific operators, so you can see the minute differences between the ways that they're played. Yeah, and going into Villa, Villa probably uh, mirrors uh, Clubhouse a little bit more than it does Bank. Very true. But I, I think SSG needs to, they need to slow down a little bit because we saw them fall for a few tricks here and there. Last round on Bank where G2 basically just baited them into the Skylight push, right? They're playing four people within arm's reach of each other and SSG didn't have enough info for that push and ends up costing them, them the round there. 
And it ends up being a bad read as part of that because it was so apparent for us, obviously, we saw G2's point of view, but we could see how much that aggressive setup was already established way early into the action phase, even the late prep phase. And all it takes is a drone or two from SSG, gather that information and then decide, well, maybe let's not even push this area at all. Let's cut these guys off as they rotate to come and take us on elsewhere. And that lack of a good read from SSG hurt them a lot, and I'd like to see some improvement going into Villa. Well, Villa, Operator Band, gentlemen, what do you expect? You've seen the Monty, the Valkyrie for both maps from Space Station. It's got to be another mirror. I mean, why change it now, right? I, I, I think Space Station is going to stick with the Valk. Um, whether they're going to ban the Monty, I, I don't know. I mean, they've done it twice. I didn't expect that coming out of them. So I guess third time's the charm, and they're going to do it again. Well, it really d uh the attacks on Clubhouse, and I think that obviously on a Bank we didn't see it. There wasn't as much focus on on the attacks was the defense really coming out as well. So uh, I, I think that it's a wise ban from SSG, especially as the Valkyrie as well. We've seen how um, pervasive that roam can be from G2, and just eliminating some of that information also assists them. That said, you know they can still use Echo, they can still use some of these other operators to assist that um, that roam. I think that SSG really do have to kind of put. G2 on the back foot, as they did, coming into their, their own defenses of Clubhouse, because if we don't see that, I can see G2, especially on their runs, running away with Villa. Yeah, so you want to control the pace of the game before it really spirals out of control for you. If the defense ends up losing too many rounds, not getting the advantage, the 4-2, the minimum that they're looking for at the end of the half, things can get really difficult when they get to the attack. And, you know, we've seen Fabian, even when he's not even alive, pull off some pretty interesting plays with a Capcan in Pro League. So that was, that was a pretty highlight round here and there. But when it comes to, to Space Station, I, I very much expect seeing, you know, pulse play, C4 play from below. This is something that they haven't shied from playing in the past. Redeemer has had some success on it, but I fear that that roam hunting with the Dokubi, with the Jackal, might be a bit too much for them to deal with should G2 choose to bring those ops. I mean, we've seen them have a little bit of a, a different take on some of the, the default defenses, right? I, going into Villa, I'd really want to see them let, let G2 have that Monty and then use your smoke and your echo to to bait that attack, maybe do some setups where you're, you're opening a weakness just to know what G2 is doing. Because right now, like, they were kind of dancing with them on, on bank. And just for, for Space Station to kind of have a, a flow and something to build off, it would be nice if they can get G2 to do consistently the same kind of push, right? Yeah, we've seen on Villa that it's uh, a lot of times, I, on my casting times uh, at this point, uh, I tend to repeat a lot of the bedroom, the bedroom, that's your launching pad into every single attack no matter where you go. Because a lot of teams, what they end up thinking is, oh yeah, we're attacking Aviator Gamer and we'll just take the office and try to move in from there. That's not really how it works. If you don't play the flanks, hunt the roamers first, and then play that bedroom play from behind, you're not going to have an easy time. You add to that the fact that there's shields, there's echo, there's potentially a maestro, C-Force from below, a vigil, an alibi. There is so much for you to deal with on just the ingress to the site. There might be way too much at that point for you to deal with. That or that. And uh, if we see something like uh, IQ in play, then the only intel gathering they're going to have is the, is the Echo, right? And Legion Mines are going to be destroyed by IQ. We've seen that so far. Mm -hmm. So maybe a little bit of a mix-up on the band might, uh, might be what SSG needs. All right, closing thoughts on your side. Uh, honestly, I do think that there are so many roam options for G2. It's what they excel at. I expect we'll see a lot of early presence around the bedroom area to deny that kind of control. And as soon as the heat's turned up too high, they'll default on downstairs. It's impossible to completely hunt out any roamers on Villa if they're happy to just keep running away. I think that's what we'll see from G2. SSG really has to take that next step because Dokubi isn't cutting it for, for clearing those roamers, and they're going to not have enough time for their site executes. G2 ban the Jackal again. I'm going to be very fearful for SSG attacks. All right, taking the initiative is the name of the game in this final map in this best of three series. So, ladies and gentlemen, back to Villa we go in beautiful Tuscany. It's all up to you. Parker, Michael, enjoy. Thank you so much, Ghassan, and thank you for the wonderful intro. Now we look towards Villa as our final map between these two teams, and I think the fact that we're at a third map right now really speaks to the testament of how good SSG has come along and how much of a fight they're bringing to G2, because G2 tends to be that standard in which we compare a lot of teams to. Uh, yeah, you go into this match and it's exactly that, Parker. People are expecting G2 to take the win. I mean, that's the expectation. But we've gone all the way to map number three, and it'll be Space Station's last chance to upset those expectations. 
as we load into Villa. G2 start on defense, Space Station on attack. So, a slight edge here to G2, but Space Station had that same edge in the previous map, Bank. They started on defense and they couldn't make anything happen with it, so it may not really matter in the end. This is just gonna come down to which team is more proficient on this map. I wholeheartedly believe that. I want this to go all the way to OT. I want this to be as close as it possibly can be. I'm fearful though that it might just be a one-sided affair. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. There's no team that I cheer for. You know what I cheer for? I cheer for a good match, Michael. That's yep. That's my philosophy. So Dev Marta can uh, sigh a little bit of a relief here, as it's not a jackal ban, as he was a little worried about. It's a ying ban instead. Obviously, G2 not really wanting to deal too much with a ying. With ying off the board, it also means that a Jaeger is not always necessary for defending here. And we'll see if G2 decides to forego the operator. They might still have to worry about grenades, though. It's going to be a Mira and Maestro ban to round things out. With Maestro getting banned by G2, not a surprise. You play Space Station, you're almost always going to ban Maestro. You're going to ban Maestro a lot of the time just based on stats anyway, but it seems to be a must ban. Very similar to how Valk is a must ban against a team like Nora Rengo. We'll start off with G2 on defense. They'll go upstairs to Aviator and Games. Tends to be your default site to start on, though we have seen teams roll the die with Trophy and Statuary. Very rare to see a team go downstairs, try the living room library, or towards that kitchen site as well. You save those for later on. You start with Aviator Games. It's a six pick onto a Jackal, off of the Glass for Rampy, and off of the Mute, a Pulse for Jonas. So, need to locate and bombs. standard setup here. Again, G2 making full use of Vigil. They seem to really like this operator. I like that bulletproof camera inside of A, or games room. It's gonna give you full visual over the site, minus the bar. Which is, you know, some information that you're not gonna have, but you know, it makes sense. Not gonna be a Valkyrie brought, so information ops are available such as Valkyrie in this situation, but not something that G2 thinks is necessary. We've seen Pulse being brought in lieu of Valkyrie quite a lot recently, especially at this event. And we've go. seen an odd downturn in terms of IQ's pick rate, or so it seems, at least in this first round, Space Station's not gonna bring her. G2 Attackers have not had to play in a decider map Attackers since the group stage the of the Paris Major. That, that takes is... us all the way back to August. That is a statement and a half there for Space Station. That's quite a while. No, well, they had a perfect uh, streak through group stages at this event, going all the way into this match. I mean, they were looking very, very strong. G2, of course, not Space Station. Yes, we're talking about G2 right now. Now, worth noting, a, a bit of stats just on these two teams. G2's body of work on Villa, not actually as large as you'd expect. Yeah, there is that very memorable matchup in which Secret was able to take down G2. It was a real barn burner of a game where Leon Gibbs decided to just go Hulk mode and smash everything that ran across his path. But since then, G2's play on Villa is really limited, actually. They played it once in the group stages against Mocket. They won 7-3. The time before that, you can go back to when they played it against Empire in DreamHack Winter. Fabian's going to get a good start, though, on the stairs. He gets pressured by the Logic Bombs. Deb Marta said that Logic Bombs don't do enough. Well, in that case, he's absolutely correct. Welcome to the Analyst Desk, Dev. You nailed it. Now Rampy on the Jackal, a very powerful operator to lose early on, and because of that, a lot of these roamers aren't going to get cleared out. Well, at least it's gonna be harder. But with the way that G2 has been playing, I don't think it really matters. I mean, the utility that, G2, or that Space Station are bringing on attack isn't being used very well to clear out the, oh, that's actually potentially a foot that's exposed, and yes it is! Shala lands the pixel shot onto Fabian, and that's good control of main stairs. It will prompt Engu to fall all the way back. Well positioned Yokai drone there from Goga is going to be able to call out the, the push on the main stairs for the majority of the round. Good intel that'll be available to G2, as you noted, in the space station lacking an IQ, lacking a twitch. You'll rely on either your eyes or a Thatcher to possibly a give you sight on the Yokai. Of course, an EMP from Thatcher doesn't destroy the Yokai, it just disables it for a short period of time. But what it does is it detaches the yokai from the ceiling, and the yokai just kind of floats on the ground, making static noises and flashing blue as it ejects a variety of sparks, making it very visible. So Thatcher, maybe not a direct counter, but at least one good enough to find the yokai's where you 
two are well set up here. There's only 35 seconds. It's a very slow attack from Space Station. They only have control of study. Nobody's even pushing the main hallway right now on the west side. Charles even some damage and it's not gonna bode well for the actual site push. Bosco goes for a rush outside, trying to come up from behind, but meanwhile, the site pushers, Redeemer and Chala, will be shut out. Just gonna be Thinking Nade and Bosco doing their best. Bosco's gonna take down Kanjuraketi, that's huge, but look at the time, and no diffuser in hand. He's gonna try to go for the plant, but I don't think it's possible at this point. Two of the last defenders holding the push on the defender, diffuser carrier, and it's an easy lockout for G2. Nice round from SSG, but not enough. Even if you take out Goga and Pengu, you've still got Jonas underneath as the pulse with the C4 in hand, with the cardiac sensor, which means that when you go to plant, you're gonna get blown sky high. So really, that round was lost with about 30 seconds left when Space Station realized in a 2v3, let's take the site. But at your own peril, you ignore probably the most critical operator, which is the one who can blow you up from below. Things going according to plan for the defense here. Very similar to a map like Clubhouse, Villa is a very defender-sided match. And when we say that, it's the most defender-sided map by stats heading into this event. I mentioned G2's record on it, but you can look over at Space Station. They've actually played it a whack at times. They played it in Pro League against Evil Geniuses to start off the season. They lost 7-3. Okay, they the lost to a stream right after Bosco had joined the roster in DreamHack Winter. The first set of... Uh, New rules for Pro League being debuted. It was an 8-6 victory for the stream, but then since then, Space Station have only played it two other times. They actually avoided playing it through the qualifiers. And in the groups, they played it against Rogue, they won 7-4. And then with the game on the line against Immortals, they played it 7-5 and won. I have to imagine that with the way that the bank record was set up for Space Station, I'm sure they were expecting to have a slightly better result there. If not a victory, at least uh, coming a little bit closer than a 7-3. So going here onto Villa is not very likely to be exactly what Space Station wanted out of this best of three. But that doesn't mean they're totally out of it. I think the fact that they're going to be starting on attack is going to be one of the biggest factors in the outcome of this match. But... I don't know, Clubhouse Clubhouse started, started to seem to go the way that of G2 for the same reason. They started on defense, they won their first defensive half, 5-1. You end a half 5-1, and then SSG managed to bring it back and end it 8-7, SSG's favor. That's, that's crazy. And it's possible that G2's gonna rack up a 5-1 scoreline on this map and we'll see the same exact thing happen, a complete reverse. Who knows? This is when we theorycrafted that well, is that 8-7 victory for Space Station on Clubhouse just how close this match is going to be between the two teams? Yeah. Or is it because it's SSG's map pick, it just shows how close and competitive G2 is on maps they might not be the most familiar with? True. And it's going to be put to the test here solely because Space Station has played this map so many times that there should be a lot more familiarity, though it's a double-edged sword because there will be a lot of VODs for G2 to be able to review, providing Space Station doesn't bring anything new. Now, the entry downstairs, Endeavor for Space Station is to take dining room and kitchen, continue on to the stairs, and push on up. Magazine. Very similar to Aviator Games. Somebody playing as a Pulse, maybe a Valkyrie, maybe a Mute, somebody with a C4 that can have information at their disposal down below. You do so and you ignore them once again at your peril. Fabian playing on Astronomy Stairs. He's got his back turned to a body and he'll lose it to Rampy. Bad timing from Fabian to turn and expose his back. And G2 will now rotate on over towards the Astro side of things, as that appears to be where Space Station is stacked on up. And that early frag is going to be so big for Space Station. The attack looking to push over to Astronomy right now. We've got somebody coming from below and Astro Stairs, somebody coming from the side. And meanwhile, on the roam, Jonas is going to take down Chala. The rest of the attackers are all positioned to push in from Master and Astronomy. Redeemer's gonna eliminate Goga. A rush here from Pengu will net a kill and a diffuser down on the floor. Not planted, but now isolated by the defenders. Bosco's gonna try and retake it. He will pick up that diffuser. Pengu will let it happen. Just trying to hold on to Statuary for as long as possible. Jonas sees the holes by his enemy but cannot land the shots. Stinky Nade will take out one, but what a shot from Jonas. Extremely tight angle to use that SMG 11 on. 
Shotgun out now waiting for the push from Master. He has information from the Yokai drones to uh, tell him, yes, indeed, there is somebody coming from the Master side of things. But look at the time. So little still available to the attacking team. Rampy will take down Yonisto, so Statuary has full control for Space Station. He's planting exposed, though. Cantor Kenny could deny this, and he's going to win the fight. He will not win the follow-up, though. Bosco wins those, and Space Station take the round. Dylan Bosco Bosco, what a remarkable move. To lose his teammate falls off at the right time. And man, you gotta, you have to know if you're getting marked that much. Have somebody look for that yokai, it might take a second or two. They are quite tricky to see, of course, because they do cloak on the roof, but they're still visible. For most people, if you look hard enough. So, what's the goal for Space Station on attack? Well, on Villa. If you don't win four rounds on defense, then I would say you emerge from your defensive side at a loss. Most teams will want to be able to take four. You'll take Aviator twice. Conceivably, you take Trophy Statuary twice. You might lose Kitchen, you might lose Living Room, or you might win Kitchen once, you might lose Trophy, etc. If Space Station can string together just one more round, they're in pretty good shape to move on forward. Because Aviator Games is gonna be locked for yet another round, it's an opportunity for G2 to do something different. But no, it'll be another defense, Trophy and Statuary. Let's see if things can go according to plans. All things considered. This is a phrase that I have used today, because you have to consider all the things, Michael. All things considered, I agree with you. Thank you very much for considering them. Mm -hmm. Is that G2 narrowly lost that round. Very narrowly. It was almost an incredible clutch. It's true. Ten seconds remaining. He hesitates a little bit less. Lands a couple shots on thinking they'd faster. Bosco's remaining. dead meat. I'm honestly surprised there was any hesitation there on Kendra Ketty's side. I would have expected a pre firing then some. The fact that Attackers there was a Yokai drone calling out the push the whole time from Master, surprising that uh, Kanto didn't have enough information to make that happen. I also suppose it makes sense that he wasn't expecting Bosco to come off the plant. But, like we said, Bosco wins those. And, uh,. Good game sense to come off that plant at the right moment and go for the fight onto Cantor Ketty, just taking it one on one and winning it outright. And that's really what it comes down to. As you said, so close, Space Station, Bosco specifically, won a 1v1, and that's how the round went SSG's favor. A couple close rounds like that can be the difference between a win and a loss. Absolutely. That's how close it ends up coming, right? I mean, <laughs> look no further than Clubhouse it previously in this matchup. We had a lot of close rounds there. So, round number three, it's going to be a second defense for G2 on the trophy statuary site. The Yokai gets spotted at Gogan. It's going on a mission down below. Mm. Bosco possibly could have been able to pick it off, but he lost it to the catacombs underneath the Italian villa. It's also going to be Pulse down there, if I'm not mistaken. Is possibly also Fabian, actually. Yeah, there, look at that. A duo roam under the site. Kendrick Getty gets the first kill onto Rampy, trying to clear from the south side, or so it seems. He's shut down in that attempt. What a shot for Child of the Fadeaway on the Onus. Nice and even here. Lots of information just squelched on G2's side. Not having the pulse is going to be huge when the site push comes out. Under normal circumstances, the fact that you did almost all of Kanto Ricchetti's health away is a dock, so he's just able to get himself right back up. So there's really nothing gained from Space Station in that altercation. They just lose Rampy and with it, the only set of frag grenades that was possible to be thrown out from Space Station. As I predicted, there hasn't been a Jaeger being played by G2. They don't really need it in this composition with what they're working with. Those holes being made in the master wall again by Habana. Just a very small prone hole to try and disrupt the rotation between sites. I like that Space Station are doing that because it does make G2 think more about their positioning and the avenues they have available to them. Goga's going to be such an important player here. If he's able to get some kills, he will help his team quite significantly. And he's holding on to astronomy the best he can. That's one for him. Going for a second. Gets to a new angle, and Attackers it's a much more powerful one. Cantor Ketty also able to get his second kill, and there's two for Goga as well. Can he get the third? No. Fabian steals it, and G2 take the round. Desperation, lots of hesitation, and that is ultimately the story for Space Station through that, what, the final minute. Thank you very much. They work on those. Yeah. They work on those a lot. But, I mean, you look, at Space Station, you look at Space Station's push, and it comes mostly all from the master side, it comes all from the bathroom side. You've got one of their members on Repel on the Window, happen to be Thinking Nade, and their entry. 
Now, possibly could have aided those players to establish control below. Didn't go anywhere. A lot of that credit needs to be paid to G2's ability to evade all the drones that were thrown at them. So congratulations, G2. They now move to Aviator Games to see if they can replicate the great round that they started off with, which was an absolutely incredible performance. Be there, mind you, it ended up being a, uh, was it a 1v3 or 2v3 with a pulse down below, so an almost unwinnable situation for Space Station. If you're SSG, you have to tighten up your entry. Two rounds now, you have failed to do the work that is needed out of that main floor and push the defenders back. That's it. It's really what it's going to come down to. We'll see if they can do it this time around. Villa is a big map. You need to be well coordinated. You need to be able to consistently have information. We mentioned that the drone economy is important on every single map. It is in particularly important on Villa because that neglected basement can be home to roamers and can be used for full map rotates. You don't have a Claymore on flank watch, you don't have a drone on flank watch, or even just a living being on flank watch. There's many ways that you can be caught off guard here on Villa. We've seen it on Aviator Games with a lack of control on 90 in Classical Hallway. People can literally just walk right up and if you've got your back turned to them, you're seated at the bar or you're seated by the billiards table, and you're gone. It's that simple. SST are, seem to be going for a study take again, which is a little bit risky, but they brought an IQ, which will help them quite a lot. We've talked about how powerful IQ is, um, especially on Villa. She can go underneath and not only hunt down operators like Pulse or Vigil, but also, on top of that, clear out a lot of electronics from below. Vertical play on Villa is very powerful. If you can put yourself in a position to use it as an attacker, there's often a lot of layers of defense to deny you that exact play, though. And it's, it's a hard thing to accomplish, especially against a team like G2 who roams so very much. Bomb located by attackers. You can see Chalice is waiting for an opportunity, but it's Fabian who will present it, and Chalice shuts him down. Nice headshot there. It's a mirror matchup that we saw before with Chala, but Chala was playing on the Dokubi last time. He knew Fabian was on the stairs. He pushed on up, saw his foot, and he got the opening kill. He knows that Fabian's going to be playing there because Fabian has been consistently playing on those main stairs. Well, I mean, if you're not going to sit on 90, it makes sense that you'd put the person who'd usually play there watching over on vault over on one of the staircases, try and police that first floor. And a lot of teams have stopped putting somebody at 90 because you're exposed to the window and you're also exposed from two separate angles. It's a rare bandit trick, but Jonas will get at least one full round of Xkeros. It's the first four and then the next two. This little crouch hole that's established by Bosco can be watched over by the smoke of Pengu. Chala, great entry. Must be looking for a reset here as he picks up his second kill on the Kanto Ricchetti and we hit the final minute in the round. Kanto being on vigil means that it's soul fragging potential that you've taken out, but also the off-site presence that we mentioned that Space Station needs to do better on finding. They've done it so far this round. How can they do on the execute? Well, Bosco takes out Pengu and there's only two bodies left for G2 left on site. Well, the Jonas and Goga. What will help G2 is the fact that Space Station are all quite softened up, and Jonas will be on the move. Fighting through the wall over towards the 90 in classical hallway doorway, but he can't find anything, possibly allowing Goga to come on in. The IQ will walk up. Bosco trying to take a fight, but he can't do it. Many marks for Jonas. That's a C4 waiting to happen. But there goes Goga, and Jonas can't unleash it in time. Two quick kills from Space Station. Will give them the win on Aviator Games, and these two teams cannot shake one another. Two rounds on attack for Space Station is good, but they're going to need more to walk away happy with this round and this half. That was all things considered just a really well-paced attack from Space Station. A big part of that was the fact that they were never taking any engagements that seemed to be to their disadvantage by fully committing to them. Lots of baits there with the peaks. Lots of angles that Space Station played in their best attempt to, well, get G2 to pre-fire into a location that was not where they would actually see their demise from. Bosco pushing in, for example, into Aviator. I mean, everybody on G2 in that last, well, the last couple seconds of that round were focused on the west hallway. And Aviator is free, Defenders, it's a free push. Space Station had a lot of that. Chala got those two early frags, starting on Fabian, of course, and then later another on those roamers. And after that was taken care of, the anchors, not in a great spot. SSG completely circled around the site. 
the only place, place they were not pushing in from that was easily accessible would be for the North Hall. And that's understandable in that situation. I'd like to have seen the wherewithal of Jonas to be able to toss that C4 out of the doorway. Yeah, it would have been nice. If you he had three marks, that, just go for it. Why not? I'm surprised he didn't, to be honest. I mean, they were up against the wall. Usually in that situation, you try to make as many places as you can to bring it back in your favor. The only real risk with that is that you are vulnerable for a couple Problem. seconds yeah. as you pull out the C4, toss the C4, and then pull out your phone Attack. and hit the button to detonate it. And if somebody from Space Station hears the rip of the C4, they have enough time to possibly react and get you before the explosive goes off. Well, as we discussed, when you're down so much manpower, you, you gotta take risks. Take the chance. To get back in, yeah. Well, didn't happen, and life moves on. G2. Life, life is actually moving on to Kitchen, Michael. Yes, G2 going to be defending Kitchen as their next site, and that's curious. So, unable to defend AVG, they, they managed it the first time, second time they didn't, but they don't repeat it, they just adjust, and to, to Kitchen, no less, which is, I don't know, I suppose I'm just a little bit surprised by G2. I figured they would have doubled down on AVG, tried to defend it again, but no. I mean, there's some really easily correctable mistakes that G2 made in that last uh, defense. For example, Fabian playing on the main stairs. I just don't play him there, or maybe play him in a much safer position. There are other options. This is a smart play by Kanto Ricchetti, so he's completely exposed. He's get, he sees the drone, he shoots the drone, and then just stays still and activates his cloaking. So that if you go to drone the area, you think, surely he must have moved. Nope, he's still sitting right there. Just like a statue. Bomb located by Positioned attacker. in a good position. Oh! Chala pulled the trigger. He could have gotten it. He doesn't know, though. The outlines are just for us, not for him. There's two bodies around the doorway leading into Trophy, and it's been 90 seconds so far as the Toxic Canister is going to go off. Down goes Bosco. Kanto Ricchetti thriving as Fabian is there as well. Caught in a crossfire, a trap laid by G2, and it will continue to roll on. It's a lockout as Redeemer will need to clutch against all four members of G2 that are still upright. There's still some marks, but... Frag grenade or an impact grenade gets tossed his way. Redeemer sees the elbow canto around one of the pieces of furniture. We'll finish this off. And G2 looking strong as it's like a pendulum swinging back and forth between these two teams. It's 3 2 in favor of G2. And it's their final defensive round. Remember what we said on Villa you need at minimum four defensive victories. If G2 doesn't get it here, that's a big win overall for Space Station, heading into their defense. A big part of that round for G2 was the murder box that you can see displayed just now, set up in the main hallway at the top of the middle f stairs. I, I'm surprised, honestly, that SSG did not drone that out. They seemed to have a little bit of information after they started engaging people at that point, but it was too late. You need to know that there's somebody playing on middle stairs and also by the statuary entrance before you start making Defenders that push. Your bombs from being Space Station didn't. And it really cost them. In fact, the whole round. The pushover by Laundry was also stopped pretty handily from G2. An easy feat considering it was a very linear push and there was plenty of counter utility from the defense denying that entrance to the site. Now, moving forward, G2 will go to Statue Trophy. This is a site that hasn't had mixed results so far for G2. One loss, one success. Success coming much more recently. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was also a, a lockout, complete domination for G2, where Space Station were primarily coming, that was a bit of a mistake. Or, no, you got it there. there you go. Space Station were coming primarily from Master and Master Bathroom. And they stacked up on Master Bathroom. Goga held it down as the echo behind the astronomy desk. It was a pretty easy hold for G2. There was also a lot of crossfires that G2 were playing, and Space Station, since they had such a linear push, really didn't have a whole lot of options after they started losing their fights. So we look at this round with 30 seconds in right now. The main stumbling block on this site last time was clearing below. And then the presence to push onto Astro after two bodies were lost. Why are you shaking your head, Michael? Hmm? Why are you shaking your head, Michael? What did you see that you didn't like? What are you talking about? In game. Oh, nothing. It's just, <laughs> it's the way that uh, we're seeing the take come out yet again here from SSG. This time they're gathering a lot more information, but once again, they're not clearing out underneath. There is no pulse in play here for G2, which is definitely great, but 
All of SSG just appeared to vault right into the closet. As there's All at once, yeah. Rampy and Bosco there. Chow is below. So there you go. You do have the Jackal below, so a good correction there from SSG. Is thinking Nate will go back onto the same window. You're right. This is the exact same setup right now. It's just a slow rotate there for the Jackal. And one thing that really scares me is that Space Station are putting it all on him to do that. But luckily for them, there are no players underneath. What is that? An easy kill for Rampy as he honest goes for a way too late bandit trick. That was not a good calculation nor count on the side of Jonas. It's like, what are you doing at that point? I don't know. Here, I might, I might as well put it down. <laughs> I don't need it. It's maybe, in my maybe this walk. It's heavy. Yeah, I don't want it anymore. Pengu's going to be playing proximity on Master Bedroom. Nobody has drawn him out yet, and he's going for an aggressive push. Sees the Claymore, shoots it, and an easy flank. Bosco goes down. Surprised nobody from SSG is watching that. But here's Fabian yet again on the stairs leading up to Astro. Here's Goga yet again inside of Astro. But Fabian dispatch. There's a Jaeger on the board, but there's no ADS to possibly take that frag grenade out. So Goga still inside of Astro, uncontested for the time being. He's gonna see Thinking Nate. There's another body coming on in. Goga trying now duel the Jackal, but there's a crossfire established by Kanto. And he takes out Chala. Gogo will get picked back up because of the stim pistol from Kanto, but there's not much time to work with for Space Station. And they know that as G2 circles in on them, this could be a troubling prospect. There's Pengu playing around the banister to take out Rampy. And once again, said so many times, Redeemer all by his lonesome. He'll win the fight against Goga, but not against Kanto. And it's a 4-2 scoreline for G2 as we switch sides between the two teams. All things considered, two rounds, attacking, that's pretty good for Space Station. They'll be going to defense now, much more comfortable position, but a lot of those rounds for G2 did look very dominant. We have to recognize that. Great rotations, great gunplay from G2 overall, and ah, wow. I mean, especially, for example, Goga, as you just saw him eliminated inside of Astronomy. He was such an important player defending trophy, holding onto Astronomy for the majority of that match. Well, half for G2. This is where you want to be for G2. Yeah, I mean, it's a comfortable spot, but also for Space Station, again, just mentioned to get two rounds at least. It's, it's manageable. And remember what happened on Clubhouse? SSG got one round on attack. Through this entire series, the only time that Space Station has led was after round one of map two because they didn't lead at all in map one on Clubhouse. They won it, but they won the very final possible round. They took round number one on bank, and then two in a row from G2, and they, in SSG, never regained the lead. And now here on Villa, G2 has either held the lead or been tied for the entire series. Now, I understand that Space Station's a great team, but having to consistently battle back Knowing that you are trailing your opponent in round count, it weighs on you at some point. It can be really fatiguing. And if that fatigue does set in on Space Station, then that becomes an even greater problem than the scoreline that is above you that you have to deal with. Now, the one good piece of news is that there's a 5-1 trail that Space Station had on Clubhouse. And they still came back, because in Clubhouse, you need to win your defenses. There's still tons of potential for Space Station to do exactly what G2 just did. Take four of your two defending rounds, and we go on to OT and we see exactly what happens. But if you're going to try to win your defenses, you can't let that happen. And Fabian will just shut Rampy down. Rampy gets a little bit too aggressive on the Dokabi of Fabian, who enters and add insult to injury. Jonas will happily take one of the two yokais from Redeemer out of action as G2 appears to have almost no trouble on that bottom floor. Yeah, so one of the major problems for Space Station when they were attacking was the lack of a roam clear. I mean, it was, it was, it existed. They had some rounds where they really made it work. But I would say they had two rounds where they made it work. And that's why they have only two rounds total. That was a great start for G2, managing to take out one of the roamers early on, and that's gonna give them much more likely a successful site. Interested to see what Pengu can be able to accomplish with the Blitz. Now, usually, when we've seen him run the Blitz on Villa before, he'll try and take study and then maybe push on over to 90 hallway through Classical as well.
good spot to be in. There's not a lot of opportunities for crossfire. You're on a very straight path. Then you just turn on in and go right into the bar. Why not? There's very little to stop. And why would you look at that? That's exactly what Pengu's going to do. There's a deployable shield all the way at the end of the hall, down by 90, though, so it might give Pengu some pause. And smart move, drone it out. Figure out what's behind it, if there is anything at all. But look at that. All four members of Space Station in sight. There's nobody playing 90. And that'll be information that both Pengu and G2 will have in a couple seconds. Pengu is a great operator for this situation. He's, of course, got the lesions, got the echo. Got the gas canisters to contest with potentially even a C4. From the smoke. Let's go for a hip fire. Just looking to get potentially some easy shots. It's unlikely to happen, but who knows? Jekyll hitting those Legion traps. Of course, going to be absorbing them. Fabi will breathe in quite a lot of toxic smoke. He'll fall back. G2 still have the manpower advantage, yes, but these gas canisters are delaying so much. Cantor Kenny just narrowly misses out on a kill. Fabian's gonna shut down Bosco as he enters from the north doorway. And look at this, east side's been isolated. The Gine will eliminate Goga. That's through that hole that the, actually, the attackers made earlier in the round. Cantor Kenny has control of Bar. You know, it's going for a plant just inside of Aviator, and there's no one to shut him down. And who's gonna get, have excellent cover? Chala eliminated inside a study. You can see the Legion contesting the shield, and he's actually going to win that fight miraculously. Redeemer goes in for kill. He does not know where the IQ is positioned. Think he needed such a tricky spot, but that's three for him. Redeemer gets himself one, and it's a one versus two. And oh no! Redeemer shuts him down. Space Station, a two versus five clutch. You don't often see comebacks like that, and off of the play of Thinking Nade to just slice and dice through the attacker's man. Triumph on Space Station's side of things. That round was over, man. That round was so over, and you could see it for a split second on Fabian's face before the camera went off him. Mm -hmm. Astonishment mixed with anger. How the hell did we lose that mm. in the position that we were in? All, Everything was in our favor. All five of those kills on two players for Space Station as well. I just, it's very, it's very impressive when you see that. Thinking Nate and Redeem are both really stepping up in that moment. Redeemer has had some serious clutch moments at this tournament, and that's just adding to those moments. Also, on that note, Fabian has been fragging out. Attackers need to locate and defeat And you would expect him to be able to win in that situation, to be honest. Yeah. Fair point. Uh, well, also, I didn't, we didn't see it. I'm curious what happened with Pengu instead of study. He was playing on Blitz and somehow got taken out by Thinking. Oh, we did, we did see it, actually, for just a second. I missed it. He was waltzing on through, Thinking Nate hit him in the shoulder a couple times. Pengu dropped the shield to try and go for a one-tap, and he got it. Oh, he went for the ADS? He ADS. That's unfortunate. Game down the sights, and well, goodbye. That was it. Unfortunate. Well, that was a setup, though, from it G2 that we saw in their secret matchup, the way that they played that. Ten seconds left. They did something very similar with Pengu. Okay, you can't take a Montane, he's banned. Good ban by Space Station. Take Pengu off a of Montane, put him on Blitz. Blitz is equally annoying in a lot of circumstances, but overall, the power that Montane has with his deployable shield is so much more valuable to G2. So this is going to mean that as long as Pengu runs a Blitz every round, a Legion is going to be an absolute necessity. Now, Space Station does run Legion, Often, ever since they moved Bosco on to smoke, they said that thinking Nate is far more comfortable on Legion as an operator, and well, it suits the circumstances quite well. We'll see what the application is on Trophy and Statuary. It's gonna be the scene for round number eight and the second defense for Space Station. Looks like a standard clear and a master. Fabian on an interesting spot, but he's just trying to bait somebody peeking into his window. No terrible surprise so far. I'm not sure what Pengu's trying to do. Is he trying to clear out underneath? We do have, it looks like, uh, no presence downstairs right now for Space Station Gaming. And it, G2, being as efficient as they are at droning, seem to be aware of this. Having that information, a push into the building from Pengu, it's just going to be a formality at this point. He's trying to establish, yes, indeed, there is certainly nobody downstairs. And SSG do have roamers. Who are going to do damage? Sticking Nate actually in the sight to eliminate Pengu from above, or at least so it seemed. Or it's quite, was a, quite a grudge match that's developing between these two players, and so far, yeah. Thinking Nate absolutely has the upper hand. Yeah, Thinking Nate's been having a really good match. Amelie onto uh, Goo Trap there. 
One of the most annoying operators on G2 side of things, gone. There's still a Jackal on Kanto. It's most fascinating to me. Ooh. They've put Fabian on the Ash, so literally realizing that he is the hottest player on the team, let's give him the Ash and have him go absolutely buck wild. Yeah, I mean, he's fragging. There's nothing else to say. Pengu being dead means he might be able to mark using Fabian's drone here and get Fabian an easy kill. It's gonna depend on Fabian's position and reaction. Bosco has rotated though, so the mark's no longer an option. Chala is the linchpin player here, playing behind the astronomy desk, as you can see. The ash charges could be really powerful if positioned properly, but oh no, just inches away from some devastation for G2. Redeemer's Yokai drone somehow <laughs> managing to avoid this pistol. And the gas canister is going to force him back. But he, I think he did get the drone. He did get the drone here. There you go. G2 out of nowhere on Rampy Chow and thinking nade. Redeemer refrags one and Bosco hits the deck quite literally. He'll need to come in back to sight. Attackers Both Redeemer and Bosco, when combined, still less than one full player on HP. Diffuser going down from Goga with the Ash watching the corner. There's Fabian on the three speed. And it's a diffuser denied. Redeemer falls off, but Jonas is there. And just as the echo gets off of his device, well, there's a member of G2 just standing and waiting. That gap that space station was trying to close so desperately will grow yet again, and G2 will go up 5-3 as space station opts to take their tactical timeout. Better now than never. Now last round, space station. We're in a really good spot, actually. They managed to clear their way, or rather, clear their way through Master Bathroom, and it seemed like they were gonna be able to hold out astronomy for a pretty long time there. What, what was that? Was that a camera? Just a random spray through the floor based on a camera? Wow, that's an impressive shot. Anyway, Space Station were in a good spot. After they took out Pengu, that's a lot of pushing power just gone. Um, following that, the push into astronomy seemed to be pretty handily stopped by SSG, and G2 somehow as you said, out of nowhere, managed to get three kills on the entry soundly. In very short order. Yeah. That was almost like a Vitality-esque push. Uh, Line them all up, wait, and then somebody snaps their fingers, and all of a sudden, a couple people die. Old age Vitality. Old yeah. age Vitality. Mm. They go way back. So. But you're right. No, I mean, it, it, and it's, I'm very surprised it worked for, for G2, considering they didn't have the Blitz anymore. And as you can see, they're going to keep bringing Pengu on Blitz, unless they're six-picking it. There you go. They heard you. They heard me, apparently. Nope. Yep. Oh. There you go. Okay. No six-pick on part of Space Station. So you'll bring the Thatcher instead, realizing Attack that the Blitz hasn't really located. paid off. You can try two rounds. The Blitz was not the play. Blitz, Blitz was not really that effective on the first round on Aviator, even after you got the plant down. Pengu got a little bit too, I would say, aggressive. Well, that last time, I think he... It's unfair to critique Pengu's play in that last round, but right. yeah, in the, in the one over by study where we saw SSG clutch, 100% agree. And then on that round in trophy, well, he was the opening deck, mm -hmm. which is rare for Pengu on the roles that he plays. True. And I think that speaks to the fact that, hey, we tried the blitz for two rounds, let's go with something else. SSG is going to continue to bring a lesion, as I said, because that's a comfortable operator for thinking Nade. He works well, and the one thing about lesion is that he just, he fits. What do you need? Let's bring a lesion. Very similar to where Zofia does uh, the same thing on attack. What do we can bring? Oh, what do we want to bring? Oh, let's bring in Zofia. Lesion go. Always useful. Doesn't matter the site. Doesn't matter the situation. Universally powerful operator. Well, I'll be announced to Space Station, there's going to be a Thatcher, which will mean that the Bandit batteries that have all been preset will be very easy fodder for the EMP that will fall down in front of the Master Wall. Range down on the balcony is G2. You have two members, you have the Diffuser there as well. Kanto Riketti's just going to watch and wait. As Redeemer tries his best to get his Yokai situated in a position, but as with many surfaces on many maps, Villa is no exception. Well, sometimes your Yokai is not exactly going to stick. I've actually been really impressed with a lot of the ways that Redeemer has played on that Echo. Might be the best set of plays on that Operator that we've had from him in quite a while. Agreed. G2 once again going for that master take. Still a lot of presence on the balcony. Pepengu's going for a north repel, trying to take out Shala inside of Astronomy. Ooh, he just barely doesn't see him, but the reactions are on point. Pepengu gets an easy kill there. This is a lot of HP, but I'm sure it was worth it in his mind. 
Plenty of time for a reset as well if he wants it. Yep. Still over half of the round left to play. Giannis has taken some damage inside of Pathfinder. He gets choked off by a smoke grenade of Bosco. So he's not going to be able to push on him. The way that SSG is set up right now, the only person holding on to statuary is going to be thinking nade. Redeemer also can play the long angles on the entry points, but here we go. Ash from below, and no target rich environment, but he has down Sinking Nade, who was the player inside of Statuary, holding on to the site. He doesn't seem to be aware of it yet, and there's nobody droning it from G2, so Thinking Nade could be recovered. It's unlikely, though. Rampy will get one for himself, and that's on a roam over by the main hallway. He's actually gonna go in for the pickup on Thinking Nade. Redeemer's gonna cover. Cantor Akedi goes down as he attempts to enter. You know, this is the second follow-up, but he's not gonna get anywhere because the smokes are poorly positioned. With Thinking Nade back in the fray, he can lay down those goo traps, and oh no, Redeemer continuing to frag out from B bombsite, leaving just Goga and Jonas in a two versus now four, now three technically with Redeemer on the floor. Bosco, excellent shot there on to Goga though. So it's just Yunus in master bed, master bath now. Going for the diffuser, challenging onto astronomy and Bosco's gonna shut him down. SSG takes it, but a lockout. It takes two crack at the site, or it takes two cracks at the site, but they'll finally get it. And now Space Station positioning themselves, down by one round, going back to Aviator, the site that they technically lost, and then retook. And ultimately ended up taking the round because of it. You have to be a bit better if you're Space Station on your defensive Aviator, because you cannot rely on a 2v4 miracle play. Not every time. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried about Space Station going on at the site, to be honest. The way that they've been clearing out the roamers, and by they, of course, I mean, G2 has been, wow, very efficient, very powerful. They usually get those early frags. The solution, it seemed, from SSG last time was to, hey, let's just roam less. And I don't know if that's really a solution because exactly. Aviator Games is so easily bomb. encompassed by the attackers. You just give full control of North Hallway, 90, and study, and it's done. I mean, stairs too, I suppose, but you get the picture. It's not hard to completely encircle this site. All right, so genuinely can't hear what the people down below are cheering. But here's another stat for you. Four G2 members are each over 75% cost. The highest figure on SSG is 67%. For those that don't know what cost is, it stands for kills, objectives, survives, or trades. Did you get a kill? Did you do something objective-based? Did you plant the diffuser, or did you manage to disable the diffuser? Did you survive the round? Or did you trade off an opponent with him? I think it's 10 seconds. Shows your value and contribution to the team in ways that might not necessarily be reflected in kills and kills alone, because we've said many times, the scoreboard does not tell the full story for what you do on this game. True. Now, G2 seemed to want to clear primarily from the northeast side, sensible. We haven't seen a whole lot of that from Space Station when they were on their attack of AVG, but it's a clear in unison for Jonas, Kendrickedi, and Fabian. And they have full control of astronomy, statuary, Attackers trophy, the whole bomb. shebang. With the north side on the top floor cleared out. Oh no! As Fabian peeks into the main hallway, Rampy is gonna shut him down. An easy peek there from 90, it seems, and he'll just fall back. He doesn't need to challenge 90 any longer. Charles gonna miss the bandit trick. I don't know if he'll be able to get this in time. It's gonna come down to the wire. Oh, he just barely gets it! <laughs> and a tip of the hat to that, and just a bit of a faint smirk on his face as that one really came down to the wire. That's the kind of thing right there that doesn't get shown on the scoreboard, but that can hold your team together and even win you the round. Now, we have seen situations where that goes the other direction, too. Bandit from G2 in the last uh, half is a good example. Now, you lost the logic bombs on the Dokumi, but you still have a set of smokes on Kanto Rakete. You noted that on the trophy statuary side, the smokes were very poorly placed from G2. There's less room for error now on this side of things. So you'll see what the Jackal can do with those smokes. All the while, Goga inside a study has managed to open up the wall, leading into Aviator Games. So it's in the game side of the thing. So on B, bomb site, Aviator site. 
you can just sit pretty for the time being. You don't really have to worry too much. You can see that all of SSG are clumped up and waiting for the push. Like I said, SSG has just decided to get rid of their roamers. Redeemer's gonna shut down Pengu though. So the anchor play working out so far. It looks like Redeemer might have also caught the legs of a member of G2 through that hole, but we don't really know exactly. Kanto Raketti gets Chala and Goga is there as now Bosco's primed and ready. Oh no, they run out of bullets and G2 just punch on in and fired up. It looked destined to be a tie game, but instead G2 are sitting on match point and space station will fight for their lives on the next two rounds. And you know what that is? It's the lack of presence off-site. Again, SSG allowed G2 to set themselves up for a push into site. And this time, instead of trying to rely on smoke cover and go for an objective play, G2 just decided to start fragging, and they certainly did. A lot of defaults from Space Station went uncovered. It was wild because Redeemer picks off Pengu yeah. at the classical hallway door, but then immediately looks elsewhere. There was nobody after that kill went down from Space Station watching the door and watching a push from Classical Hallway where two members of G2 were. Just simply thinking that, okay, we've got the only, push, uh, the only person pushing from that area? No, you didn't get him. There was still more, and then G2 took advantage of that. And that doorway is so problematic to so many teams that just forget about it because you can just walk right into the site. And depending on the way that the defenders have set up those walls, that lead into study and lead into aviator. You as an attacker can have all the cover in the world by simply going through that door when somebody isn't looking in the right direction on defense. Poor positioning from SSG in that they had everyone in sight. Poor yeah, coverage from SSG in version. that despite having everyone in sight, they weren't covering the default pushes into the site. And that's the story of the round. G2 set themselves up to clear in, and they won the fights. Attackers objective Speaking is to of, a bomb and it. G2 have realized the opportunity that they have with this site and have opted to bring a glass, which is going to be the perfect tool in that scenario should it arise again. Drone is deployed. It's also the first crack at glass that I believe we've seen in these three maps, is that correct? I don't, yeah, I think... I want to say from my gut that we haven't seen a glass. My gut agrees with your gut, Parker. Well, if our guts are synced up together, then good things can possibly happen here, and well, we'll see what Jonas can do on the glass. We mentioned on Bank that it was surprising that we weren't seeing a glass, because Jonas has played this role many times before. True. Seeing it on Villa is interesting, because glass is able to just pin down the defense so effectively Similar to the way that Capital can work. In fact, G2 actually banned Capital the last time that they played Mocket on Villa, if my memory serves me correctly. But Capital, an operator that we do see in Space Station stable of operators, absent so far on Villa. So with that said, a minute has gone so far. You hear the telltale signs of Rampy's MP5 just plugging away as G2 line up inside a study. Perfect place for the glass to be. And the first smoke is it looks like G2 is gonna try to end this one quickly. They have control. Smoke will choke out Jonas as he's trying to make his way back as there's that yellow gas. But Goga's in, going for the plant. Space Station is locked down for the time being. Goga stuck in barbed wire. Bosco takes out Pengu. Chow eliminates Jonas. And it seems like with Chow a double and Rampy 2, G2's gamble on pushing not working out one bit. Goga on a tiny fraction of HP has five members of Space Station fighting for their lives. But there's Goga on the flank. He sneaks his way in once again. Michael, that classical doorway, but Bosco pulls out the shotgun. One to the chest, Goga goes down, and we have a 12th and final round to determine if G2 wins this or if we need overtime between these two teams. Space Station keep finding themselves in a terrible position and somehow <laughs> find, working their way out of it. I, I am absolutely astonished by the level of play we're seeing from Space Station right now. That last round, it seemed like G2 had isolated the site and were able to get the defuse plant down, but it was stopped by the gas canisters from Bosco. Following that up, look at the flurry of kills from SSG. Chala still on a roam. No one's checking for that. Rampy, playing inside a gun vault, did so much damage on the push from the west hallway. Just in general, an excellent hold from Space Station. Glass was very powerful there, but he wasn't used properly. And because of that, G2 could not win the fights they were presented with. We'll go to Trophy, 
for the next defensive round. The last chance for Space Station to push us into OT. It's a good thing they're not going to gamble on one of the sites downstairs. So far, we've actually only seen one go at a first floor site. That was Kitchen in round number five. It was a successful defense for G2 after they had won trophy. Didn't go to Aviator, lost Aviator, but said went to Kitchen instead. On SSG side of things, it's been three for Aviator and now three for Trophy as well, just following the cycle as best as possible. We noted on Villa that if you go 4-2, then you win your side. That's pretty good, Yeah, obviously. But at the same time, you need to do that on defense. SSG is one round away from being able to do that, propel us in towards overtime. In which case, it comes down to really the team that defends twice out of those three rounds to have a significant advantage on this map in particular. But remember when we said the same exact thing about Clubhouse? And then we saw, I think it was Space Station get the basement first. They lost the basement defense. Then we saw the basement defense we lost again. And then it was a successful basement defense the last round, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, things went completely opposite. Yeah, it went it went the opposite way around of what you were supposed to Stay see. Back. Hey, Church has been defended four times and it's been successful by the defense every single time. 100% success ratio. Oh, by the way, both overtime defenses knock, of Church knock. attacking wins. Of course. It was very confusing. Yes. As Milos pointed out on the analyst desk, you almost always want to attack from the master side of things. It appears that there was an impact trick that might have stopped some of the XK rush from going off. It's up to Goga. So there's a singular hard breacher that is being used, and yes, that's actually correct. So there might be a prone hole that you have available, but that's about it. One other burst of the XKROS was used on the bathroom wall to give you line of sight down into Astro. You can hear the carbine of Chala playing in that position, and there's a yokai over the door as well. That can get very hairy for Jonas. If he pushes on out, get disoriented, and then pounced upon from one of the defenders playing in Attack from SSG. You got Fabian downstairs as well on the Ash, just trying to do some soft destruction as best as he can. And oh, Fabian takes out Chal in a good joint effort from Jonas there as well. And the last X Kairos will go off to allow a crouch hole into the master side of things and in towards the side of Statuary. I think it'll be so very important for G2. And they're setting up the pressure. They have astronomy control, but the gas canisters are pushing them back. Most of the attack from D2 coming from the master side, only Fabian on Astronomy Stairs. The Yokai Drone is playing with Fabian, delaying him significantly. And two Yokai Drones still in play. Nobody's been able to figure them out. You got Gogo looking to go for a plan. He's in sight, he's just by the statue. Jonas is gonna cover, looking for yellow bodies. Cuts through Bosco, looking for one more. See if anybody bothers to contest him at all. Goga seconds away from getting this down, and it's a post plant for SSG. Very difficult. So much blue on the screen, though, as Pengu tries to hold it together. He's the lone member of G2 to find the scoreboard after the diffuser goes down. There's been a miracle of a retake from Space Station so far. The lightning strike twice. Kanto Ricchetti goes for a rotate outside. Rampy juiced up with that stim pistol, looking for Pengu, but it's an easy kill on the thinking nade. And now Rampy in a 1v2. Looks around the corner, a pre-fire, but he's gonna make a lot of noise. He's not the fastest, takes out Pengu, but there's not a lot of time. He has to go for the defuse, but Kanto is going to play the clock, and we are dangerously close. Rampy knows it, look at his face, come on! It doesn't matter, G2 is there! Rampy the impactless frag, he's upset! But G2 look to repeat, and they punch a ticket to the semi-finals. If only there were a couple more seconds showing the importance, Michael, of watching that clock, but it's a victory for G2. No overtime for map three.